to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. One of the greatest prayers you can pray as a believer is that the eyes of your understanding truly be enlightened. Are we together? The eyes of your understanding is not intelligence. The eyes of your understanding is not intellect. The eyes of your understanding is not philosophical knowledge. The eyes of your understanding is access to the mysteries of the spirit alongside their operation. You can know that these mysteries exist. You see, revelation is not knowing what God has said. Revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life. Knowing what God has said is not revelation. When you know how to make it work in your life, he told Job, knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth. Amen. It's important that when we come into God's presence, we listen. You will think that when people come into God's presence like this, the fact that you are looking at me, it doesn't mean you are listening. Are we together? People can be distracted. People can be careless. Some can be looking with their eyes open, but they are sleeping. Are we together? All kinds of things happen. It was Jesus himself that told us what happened to seeds. Some fall by the wayside. Correct seed, correct sower. Some fall by the wayside. Some fall in the midst of thorns. Some fall on a rocky ground. Even among the good soils, three kinds of results. 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. May you be 100-fold tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. A day will come in your life where you would have sufficiently gained access to the mysteries of the kingdom alongside the keys that release their power and let me tell you when that time comes you will be nothing short of a wonder everybody around you will know that the finger of god is upon your life we make impact in this world through mysteries we make impact in this world not through desire It takes more than desire to make true impact for the kingdom. I'll share a thought with us and then we'll walk on a scripture and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. I shared with us here, for those of us who were not here, please listen attentively. And by the way, those following us online, we love you, we honor you, you are part of us. That there are three platforms upon which impact is established. Please listen. When God is ready to reveal himself to a man, when God is ready to do business with a man upon the earth, there are only three platforms as revealed from scripture upon which that man will access capacity to make impact. Platform number one, encounters. Don't forget this. They are not cheap. They are not basic at all encounters the first platform that grants a man access to walk with god is encounter everybody say encounter encounters are very very important because they birth spiritual realities in our spirits by encounters i don't just mean visionary encounters even encounters through the word an experience that makes God real to you 
an experience that makes a dimension of God real to you. It could be aided through a vision. It could be aided through a supernatural experience. But regardless of what platform it comes through, any experience capable of making a dimension of God become real to you is called an encounter. True encounters produce conviction. Not memory, conviction. A true encounter, listen, it doesn't just leave you with a memory. It produces conviction. If you tell me you've had an encounter with a dimension of God, I will know. I don't care whether you claim you had a vision or a scripture opened up to you. When it is opened up to you, the first sign that you had an encounter is unusual conviction. It translates to faith. If God gives you an encounter of his healing power, it produces conviction. If God gives you an encounter of a dimension of spiritual reality, it must come with conviction. Say conviction. There are so many people in the body of Christ who are not convicted about the things they teach. It's one thing to teach from a theological standpoint, and that's important. It's one thing to teach from a sociological standpoint. But it's one thing to teach from a depth of conviction. It's not by shouting. It's not the volume of your voice. It's not the, the repetition of your grammar. Conviction is a realm where your speaking, your listeners know that the things you are saying are true with you. Say encounters. We must crave for encounters. You know, people who don't really understand this thing think that all we are advocating is that people begin to have out of body experiences and they begin to propose as though you are telling people to not pay attention to the word of God to now begin to contend for angelic encounters heavenly encounters as above the word of God no the Bible says God appeared um, to Samuel in Shiloh by his word are we together he appeared by his word so an encounter doesn't necessarily mean until you see an angel and he says promise i was sent from heaven to you that from today you take the healing power of god to the nations and then every time you stand you say i remember what the angel said yes that's an encounter but there are men like reinhard bonke who had encounters they never had any visionary experience when you listen to Reinhard Bonke's story, he will tell you that a day came, they brought in a great man of God to preach. The man preached the first day and told all the sick people to come by the second day. And the morning of the second day, Reinhard Bonke was excited because they were going to wheel all kinds of sick people. In Africa, if you tell people to bring the sick, they are obedient. They will bring the sick whether they are related to them or not they will that sense of nationhood will kick in they will drag every sick person and so they brought those people and the preacher told Reinhard Bonke he said the Lord told me to pack up my things and get out of this place you will preach and you will heal Reinhard Bonke said no 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 no. you can't be playing I mean you are the great man of God I'm only here to encourage you and he said I'm sorry I have to be on my way Reinhard Bonke said he cried and cried because his ministry was about to be shredded into pieces and then all of a sudden that's an encounter the word of the lord comes you don't read it it comes in the fifth day of the fifth month of this the word of the lord came there's the one you try to get but the one that comes is what produces encounter and renard bonke just looked and said lord i will go and do the preaching and you will do the healing and that was it a man who has produced a ministry that has liberated africa encounters you can be reading a scripture you can be reading john 3 16 but one day the word of the lord will come to you for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him when that encounter comes you can sing songs like yes jesus loves me you sang it in Sunday school. It was not an encounter. It was a recitation. But when it comes as an encounter, you will sing that song and you are crying and somebody looks at you and says, ah, ah, you are deeper than this. And he said, that's the point. 
it has not come to you but it came to me are we together encounters my life is a testimony of encounters i can point to you exact periods in my life where certain things happen that birthed certain convictions that have been responsible for releasing certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities may god give us encounters the meeting is called koinonia and the first thing you should get is an encounter if you are a prayer leader without an encounter a pastor without an encounter an apostle a prophet whatever you call yourself a time will come your lack of assurance will become evident to those you are leading are we together it's not by bold face bold face is not encounter i know god will show up please encounters produce convictions unto death but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded say god give me encounters say it again god give me encounters you believe god has called you into the ministry of kingdom wealth but you are not sure you don't have encounters so you are hoping you will be rich to prove to people that you were called into the ministry of kingdom financing you lack encounters listen an encounter makes your conviction as your primary evidence not physical results your conviction becomes your primary evidence so god can call you to the nations as at the time you are speaking the only other listener is your wife but you still say god called me to the nations i love men of convictions conviction conviction we we live in a result driven a carnal result driven generation where until you produce physical results that can be seen people oftentimes will not believe you so you will need encounters let me tell you so that when things do not happen the way you want you are still left with your encounter job said though he slay me yet will i trust him i know him the god in the mountain is still god in the valley let me tell you why many people gas out many pastors many preachers i've seen a lot of preachers say god sent me to so 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 city when the city became too hot and whipped them they left quietly encounters give you stamina encounters give you stamina encounters give you stamina he said if you turn aside in the day of battle he said your strength is small one guy came and met me one time and he said god has called him into the apostolic ministry i said congratulations a few months later it became too hot for him and he came back he said i get it now i'm an evangelist i said go. i told him i said go for a retreat a retreat that produces an encounter because he thought it's just in a name usually when it becomes too hot people change persecution <laughs> we think the name will give you access for preaching fast so you say i am prophet a and b and c and then the heavy controversy that lands on your head you quietly remove it and say i am pastor joshua selman <laughs> say encounters may god give us encounters Amen. one big secret in my life is that god used encounters to convince me of my call solid encounters both visionary encounters word encounters prophetic encounters that's why no matter what anybody says or does i will never even pray about it that's how certain i am when you try to explain things to people you don't have conviction enough please talk to someone by your side and say get conviction get conviction strong conviction are we together strong conviction we doubt and we fall by the wayside and we make a mess of and you know it's a terrible thing to brag so much before people and then you are now forced to defend your advocacy 
but the encounter that will sponsor your confidence is not there if i believe god has called me to carry the healing anointing and there are hundred wheelchairs and i pray for them and nobody gets healed i tell them may god bless you and uh have a nice day and i'll go to sleep and someone says but man of god ah it's either you are backsliding or something has happened i will go back and challenge myself to rise greater but i'll not go back saying god if it's that i didn't hear you well can you explain to me again no we're laughing but i'm, I'm trusting that god is speaking to us encounters do you know that the world follows men of conviction if i am a thief today there is a there is a certainty about my stealing that will force you to say look this guy knows what he's doing he's worth hearing terrorists are men of encounter and conviction they have met spirits the spirits told them certain things so while the government is trying to advise them and say why don't you become nice social beings they say all of you are confused and we are out to kill you and bomb you and you say are you sure you'll do this yes what of your life what of your wife and your family and they say to hell with them conviction from an encounter what encounter do you have that sponsors your confidence oh i saw god give a jimmy this it's not enough reason you must have a personal encounter we lack this a lot. I'm taking out time to help you understand this. We lack this a lot in the body of Christ. You can borrow Joshua Selman's revelation. Listen to one koinonia message and just write everything out. And preach in a conference. And say, God said there is this and that and that. But you know, there is a way people look through you. And they see that even you as you are preaching, you are just saying, Lord, I hope I'm right. I'm about to pray. Joshua Selman prayed after that message. And now I'm about to pray after my own. Then you stand and speak and say, I see angels everywhere. Whether or not you are seeing them. Because you thought I was lying. So now you say, I see angels. Overflow, are you ready? Say yes. No encounter. That's how preachers disgrace themselves convention after convention till everybody in your circle stops bringing you for meetings because you have a track record of copying with no results someone can guide you but the ultimate journey is that you meet christ you meet him not just theologically but you have an encounter say amen, amen. it's good to know the god of joshua selman but stay until that God becomes your God. The people told the woman, the, the Samaritan woman, he said, we believe you now, not just because you told us. We have seen him for ourselves. You came and introduced us, but ah, talking with him, he did something to us. In the name of Jesus, may God give us encounters. Over your business, over your life over your family so that when you go and you look at your cgpa and you look at it from 4.5 god forbid but you drop to 3.5 and you see three carryovers you don't suddenly say ah and god said i'll be a leader god you must come and you see some prayers are, are revelations of the doubts you've been nursing for many years so what you have feared secretly now comes upon you and you say god but you told me now you told me eh? you told me that this brother will marry me this one that he has done introduction what are you saying don't make noise until you have the burning bush experience we brag too much on hearsay i watch preachers talk sometimes and i'm saying be careful though jesus is lord but his lordship is exercised with wisdom and understanding If you are not healed in this meeting except i'm not called hey at the end of the meeting only two people are healed encounters encounters i crave for them i create the atmosphere for them i desire them in my life encounters it's not about reading the bible genesis to revelation 
It's not about quoting scripture as important as it is. It's not about a display of Greek and Hebrew words. Encounters produce convictions. Convictions produce faith. Faith moves mountains. It's not what you do. It's the conviction behind what you do. Number two. The second platform upon which men do business with God is a comprehension or access to the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom. An encounter is one. You meet a person in an encounter. But you must comprehend the principles of the kingdom. Is God helping us tonight? Your knowledge of the principles, the working knowledge of the principles of the word of God is another platform for you to activate a life and a destiny of impact. So what principles do you know? It says, and I will give you the keys. Right? And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, King James says. Whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amplified says, whatever you allow, whatever you disallow, the power to release realities and the power to close doors is called the key of David. Your life, there is a dimension of impact in your life. Hear me, brothers and sisters, that is a product of the mysteries that you know. This is what I define as dominion. You've heard me say it again and again. Dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. We've spent this year, as much as many other years, dissecting these mysteries. Under the teaching secrets of the kingdom, the series, get it, secrets of the kingdom, right? I taught you six mysteries that control mighty dramatic manifestations upon the earth. Mystery number one I taught you is the law of surrender. The law of surrender. That this is the mystery that holds the key to unusual amounts of unction upon the lives of people. Complete surrender. Complete surrender. Mystery number two is the power of a transformed mind. For as he thinketh in his heart, right? So, he's, so he is. I told you realities are first formed in the realm of the spirit before they find expression in the physical realm. So you never try to change anything by physically trying to alter it. You alter it from the realm of the spirit and it changes. Mystery number three is the law of competence. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He says, He shall not stand before mean men, he shall stand before kings. Are we together? We we did this very, very mystery number four. I explained to you the secret of coming out of situations that are about to swallow you in all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he will make straight your path. That's what the Bible says. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. A time must come in a man's life where you face challenges that are bigger than your current level of exposure. You don't know anything about that challenge. Know how to go out. At that time, the key is to acknowledge him. He says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Praise is a weapon for acknowledgement. So as you begin to acknowledge him, there is a promise attached. He said he will make straight your path. Mystery number five is the mystery, I call it the irrefutable mystery of destiny helpers. Men and women anointed, commanded, instructed to appear in your destiny and take you to the next level. I'm doing a recap. It, it, please, I, I don't know how to plead with you. Believe what I'm teaching you and understand it and you will change your life. There are three kinds of destiny helpers I shared with us the other time. Number one, they are called divine connectors. They do not have the ability to help you, 
but they can link you to where your help is divine connectors number two men of influence they have the capacity both the economic power both the governmental power right the intellectual prowess to endorse you and open up doors for you an example of such a person is joseph of arimathea a man who through his influence jesus was ordered to come down from the cross and buried in a tomb you need them and then number three faithful men the third kind of destiny helpers faithful men 400 of these men came to david david was running he was a failure he was broke he was on his way ministry had packed up but 400 men came and they entered a covenant with themselves to be loyal to him until he became king and then the last mystery which in my opinion is the most powerful maybe secondary to only an encounter is the law of honor hebrews 7 7 and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the greater i told you that there is a system in the body of christ nobody blesses himself you cannot lift yourself to a new dimension are we together no matter how anointed you are no matter how great you are at every point in your life there are people below you trusting god for your grace to lift them there are people above you there are those who already represent what your future aspirations are and there are people who you represent their future aspiration the recognition of that is the key to living where you are to the next level you ignore the law of honor you will pay for it dearly you ignore the law of honor you will pay for it dearly there are human beings that represent systems the recognition of what they represent alongside the possibilities god has opened unto them will bring you into their realm of reality honor is the key to access every time a door closes over your life this honor closed it and every time a door opens over you honor opened it so there are many other mysteries that we have to learn i can teach you mystery upon mystery upon mystery one of it is he that wants friends must first show himself friendly now you read these things as verses until god opens your eyes then you will see the reason why many people never have the gift of men because they are not friendly to be friendly does not mean to be a clown to be friendly means to be hospitable are we together it says that you neglect not being hospitable for in it many have entertained angels unaware it was through hospitality sarah trapped the angels and they gave a revelation about the inevitable doom of sodom and gomorrah and it was on the strength of that hospitality that abraham was given access to that mystery and with it he rescued lot praise the lord the third platform upon which men receive from god and create lives of notable impact in the earth is covenant connection covenant connection covenant connection may god make us believe what i'm sharing may god make us believe it may god make us believe it in the name of jesus christ covenant connection the bible speaking about men and describing the nature and the character of their success says blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sit in the sin the seat of the scornful he says but his delight what is in the law of the lord and on that law he meditates day and night then he says he shall be this is how his success will be in the similitude of that of a tree if the bible says you shall be like something study that thing it says the success of a believer will be like that of a tree how does a tree rise number one it is planted from the stem that rises branches begin to come all branches do not move in the same direction but regardless of their direction 
the strength of the branches are determined by the strength of the vine that they are connected to they may face different directions and the trees can grow so tall taller than buildings and the trees can stand for years and decades branches fall and rise they are pruned and they come again but the stem connected to the root remains intact any branch that cuts itself outside of the vine dies you don't water the branches you water the roots and it has a system are we together trying to pour water on leaves is a waste of time a system so he said he shall be like a tree listen our personal spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant please you have to understand this our personal work with God is based on relationship however kingdom advancement is based on covenant not the covenant of Moses not the covenant of the new testament i'm not talking old and new covenant a covenant is a system through which god guarantees a continuity of his program now listen listen look up please let me teach you this get it get it in the name of jesus christ the way the kingdom works is through the principle of covenant and alignment please listen so what happens is that every dispensation has a dimension of spiritual realities that they should experience which is part of the ongoing unfolding of the multifaceted dimension of god are we together so every dispensation has a dimension of god earmarked for them to experience but the nature and the character of that revelation is such that when god wants to come in in a dimension to a territory and a dispensation his first assignment is to find a man say a man when he finds a man he enters a personal covenant with that man that personal covenant becomes the platform upon which that dimension of god is revealed to the dispensation no other person will access that dimension in that dispensation out of alignment to the person in covenant with god are you getting what i'm saying yeah god will not reveal the same thing to everybody he will reveal the same thing to one person and direct every other person who wants to experience that part of him to align with the covenant that he has had upon that man or upon that system are we together the yardstick that he uses to bring men to that experience is called an election of grace it has nothing to do necessarily with their personal yieldedness it is part of his sovereignty and his predeterminate counsel so god calls men every time you are talking about redemption the journey of redemption and the doctrine of christ starts from abraham not noah not adam are we together whether it's christianity whatever kind of religion the moment they are communicating the doctrine of christ the genesis of the blueprint of the doctrine of christ starts from abraham god called one man to come out of a place called all of the chaldeans genesis chapter 12 right he wanted to use his father terror but something happened and he the, the you know the button passed on to abraham and he called abraham an idol worshiper out of all of the chaldeans and he called him and he said look i am calling you out come out of your father's house your kindred and all of that and i will do certain things with you and abraham obeyed him there are so many people in the bible that represents god's covenant point there are portals that open their dispensation and their generations to certain dimensions of god that law did not die with the coming and the going of Jesus Christ. There are still men today that represent new dimensions of God or continuity of his program. Hmm. Are we together? Alongside your encounter, 
alongside your comprehension of the laws of the spirit your covenant connection to men or systems that represent the continuity of God in that dimension but this is where Satan cheats a lot of people please listen to me carefully this is something else I'm talking about but we need to understand this God asked me to reiterate these things you know why we honor men we honor men for many reasons number one is the anointing they carry number two the sacrifice that they have with God that has brought certain levels of possibilities in their life number three is the spiritual system that they represent when David wanted permission to fight Goliath do you know the question Saul asked he said whose son is this in other words I want to know the tribe he came from so that I know whether this can be possible this boy is too young I'm a king but I need to know where he's coming from so we can trace the history of the spiritual deposits God left with that tribe. And when they found out that David was of the Benjamites, he said, go and fight. David came to him and he said, Goliath, I know you think I'm a small boy, but there is a tribe standing before you, not a person. Watch what happens to you now. Goliath said, am I a dog? David said, we will we'll see who, who is the dog. I have seen people in my life who never become billionaires, but they never lack whether they pray or not. Even when they are not tithing, it's a covenant. There is something they are connected to, whether they know it or not, that affords them those spiritual possibilities. <sighs> Open our eyes, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I have seen pastors who when they stand to teach he will almost sleep but when they call upon the God of heaven he shows up it's not personal encounter in fact many of them may have a lot of character defaults and while you are talking about their character it's like God owes them his presence they call him and he must show up there is a covenant he respects he says my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my mouth are we together so some of our people although they were in the village with witchcraft they had 16 children one woman 16 children and yet after 16 children the woman is still standing her stomach is still as flat as an arrow you wonder whether the children grew in a basket it's a covenant brothers and sisters it's not about knowing what drug to take some things are spiritual when they are spiritual they show and you see it Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Hmm. Oh, you better believe it. So that when you look at a man, you know that not every result you see was initiated by his personal altar. When you know that, there will be no room for pride when God begins to give you results. Because you will know that certain dimensions of your result are purely an issue of alignment. Purely an issue of what? Alignment. Spiritual alignment. There was a time, for instance, in living faith, it still happens, where there were strange testimonies, 2005, 2006, creative, those ones were, it's what the Bible calls the walking of miracles, not testimonies, where a man would tell you, I was a cleaner, and by Sunday, the owner of the company said he's leaving Nigeria, and they made me a CEO. Strange testimonies. So you see somebody who drag himself and he's sleeping while they are preaching sleeping they say in jesus name he never says amen he's even angry but something still came on him with the anger he turns and he leaves and goes back and the landlord says you are staying five years in this house the rent is is free and the man says i don't understand what is happening to me two weeks later they call him and say there is a job we want to give you and he says i don't understand there is a covenant when god looks at you he sees the covenant There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, 
Hallelujah. If you know this thing I'm teaching you, you can, you can make, it's not a license to sin. You can make the worst blunder on earth. Quarter to shame. The covenant kicks in. And God says, I remember. <sighs> Jonah! Jonah was running as a rebel. But God used what happened to describe what will happen to Jesus. Jonah! He says the same way Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Was that a good testimony? Yeah, Jesus used it. God had Solomon for the sake of his father, David. When Solomon dedicated the temple, he lifted the temple and he said, Lord, I enter a covenant with you that whoever faces this temple and pray, whether their faith level is there or not, hearken to them. So in the days of Daniel, they signed a policy and they said nobody should pray. Daniel knew that if he will use his personal faith, he's a human being. The truth about it is that it was not just his personal spiritual life. So he opened the window to Jerusalem and he started praying. And listen, that was why he was sure when they were about to throw him in the lion's den. God did not show up because of Daniel. He showed up because of the covenant. What have you enjoyed in your life because of covenant connection? Some of us, every good thing that has happened to you has come because of your, your personal push, which is good. But brothers and sisters, the demand that life will place on you will be greater than your spiritual life. And if you have to wait till you become strong, you may not even live for that to happen. There are people in Koinonia here, they are not tithing, but they are having strange results. They, even them, they are doubting, they are saying, what's wrong? Something is covering you. It's a covenant. Break every chain. Break every chain. Those who know this do business with God upon the earth and open strange doors. Strange doors. Strange doors. Living faith, redeemed, and MFM. There are three ministries that have seen them with such a strange covenant of, of ownership. They can enter any land regardless of the vow the government made not to give them land. They must give them land as much as they want. It's a revelation. Are we together? Brothers and sisters, some things are not just about fasting and prayer. There is an advantage God placed in the body. And if you are not aware of it, you may never step into certain dimensions. Never step into certain dimensions. I came to show you certain things. God said I should teach it again. If God says I should teach it, it means many of us did not get it. There are certain things in my life I will, I will never suffer and struggle over. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that foolish. I am not that foolish. You see, it's a painful thing when you are suffering certain things that is available by covenant to the tribe you belong to. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, yeah. break every chain. Elijah was a man who had a covenant with God that represented the system of the prophetic and the apostolic. He had other sons called the sons of the prophet. Is that true? But he had a strange man who was a farmer called Elisha. Elisha was not a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. He casted his mantle upon him and Elisha started following him. Join other prophets. Listen. And then the Bible says a time came when Elijah, Elijah was about to go to heaven. Is that a normal human being? Is that how you go to heaven? But that's how he went to heaven. That's how you know that it's not a normal human being. He knew where the gate of heaven was beyond the Jordan. He said, I'm about to leave. He knew where to wait for the chariots. Ah. A man was taking fresh air on a mountain and they came to harass him. He used one of the elements of the supernatural called fire. He said, I will not just use my mouth. If I be a man of God, let fire come from heaven. He prayed once and fire came. Is that how you pray when you stand? Look at what... He, he, hi. Koinonia, hear what I'm teaching you. Listen. 
when they were about to judge the prophets of Baal, there are some dimensions of witchcraft that is your covenant of connection that dislodges them. Not just your personal prayer and fasting. When the prophets of Baal were there, they were prophets under the custody of Jezebel. And look at the mockery. Elijah said, laugh. He said, he said, cut yourself, shout. Maybe your God is sleeping. Look, if I am Elijah, I will be fasting. <laughs> Deliver me, O oh God. Wipe my tears. For the sake of your glory. I will be writing out the worship songs. Looking for somebody to play a cymbal. But here was a man crossing his leg. And mocking at them. From morning till evening he laughed. Because he knew they were wasting their time. After everything. They caught themselves. So that their God will see blood. And remember their covenant with him. When they tried singing and praising and it did not work. They danced around the prophets of Baal. They started bringing blood. What is blood? The covenant. Baal, remember our covenant as prophets with you. And Elijah shut the heavens and said, keep calling on him. Then when it was time for Elijah, I thought Elijah would have just said, all right, God, fire, come down. He would have been surprised. He said, give me 12 stones. 12 stones listen listen let me teach you something the bible says in the new jerusalem it said the gates of the city there were 12 gates and the gates had a name of the 12 tribes of israel every one of those tribes represented a dimension of god and 12 foundations having the name of the apostles he said give me 12 stones and the prophets of Baal were watching after it he put a sacrifice and then he said pour water the water was a mystery he was not just trying to say so that you don't think i hit fire because there are three forces that open the gates in this earth realm the spirit the water and the blood so he said poor water afterwards he lifted his eyes to the heaven the pattern was correct follow me and he said oh god and the fire the bible said the fire came licked the sacrifice and swept everything right and then hear what he said the moment that happened he said pursue all the prophets of Baal don't let one escape and kill them hear me people of God there are dimensions there are kinds of mountains that were never designed to be approached alone we fool ourselves thinking because we know God every mountain will just go like that he said, all things are possible but they are, they are possible based on the knowledge available to you if you can see me as I'm going you will have something the moment he left and he held the mantle he would have gone to the well and say I am a man of God Pat, he would have been surprised he said where is the Lord God as far as God was concerned he did not see Elisha he saw the covenant did the water obey? Absolutely. Do you know why Joshua was successful? God transferred a mystery to him. As I was with Moses, as I was, the way I related with him, so I will relate with you. He said, and because of that, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. So when the angel appeared, Joshua removed his knife and he was going to kill the angel. The angel had to explain he would have died. The word of God would have killed the angel. Not the sword of Joshua. He said, are you for us or against us? And the angel said, hold on. Neither. He had to explain. Because a man was running with the word of God. The Bible says, for instance, it says where two or three are gathered, where? In my name. The meaning is as touching my authority. There is a dimension of God that only shows up under corporate fellowship you will never have that dimension alone in your room fast for 100 days you will not see those things that was why the psalmist was crying he said early will i seek you he said to see your power and your glory in my life as i have seen in the sanctuary there's something i've seen that only happens when believers gather i've not seen it can you make it happen in my life hallelujah he says, if two of you shall agree, hold my hands, Jimmy, as touching anything, there are certain levels of prayer 
that is not just about I am alone the veil has been torn I, I'm, I'm alone I can access Christ it's a system there are certain levels of difficulty that when two or three agree you can just say one prayer that was why the apostles when they were threatening them did they pray individually Acts chapter 4 remember they came together because they understood this it took that kind of grace to bring the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost they could not pray alone and have the Holy Spirit come so when the Bible says Acts chapter 2 verse 1 now when the day of Pentecost was fully come it said they were all gathered in one accord that formation gave the Holy Spirit room to come in Acts chapter 4 when they threatened them they came together and said Lord behold their threatenings it says stretch forth your right hand now to heal and that signs and wonders be wrought through your holy child and the building shook there is a difference between your personal prayer life and the body of Christ the body of Christ is a mystery of possibilities when you understand the mysteries that govern the body of Christ you will do things that you will never imagine you would have done are we together I remember when a few people wrote jam here you were you were testaments of the things marks being added I'm not talking of those 40 40 marks you see people someone will check his jam 197 go and check again 231 how did that happen look let me tell you something when you see a man of God study the systems around his life don't just say this person is anointed Kai, he has power what makes the heaven owe him it's like it's like god god owes certain men of god a debt he must pay even if they call his name joking he has to show up there is something that makes that happen my altar is calling you oh god my altar is calling you oh god our covenant is calling you oh god take my praise oh god take my praise oh god sing it one more time my altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you. It's calling you, oh God. Take my praise. my praise listen let me tell you something powerful numbers 24 let me do my teaching now Mike. numbers 24 let me share something with you that will break some gates open I want your spirit to be sensitive something will happen in this place today numbers 24 Balaam was called by Balak to curse the nation of Israel. I've shared it here. The Lord asked me to repeat it, so I'm repeating it. Now listen. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, it's actually 23, 24. I'm jumping for time's sake. Follow the story. He went not as in other times to seek for enchantment. Now, there's a lot to say about Balaam. The Bible talks about the doctrine of Balaam, the error of Balaam, the way of Balaam. There is a long story on that. I don't want to go into that. But he set his face towards the wilderness. Let's rush it. Go ahead. And Balaam lifted his eyes. Balaam wanted to find out where... Listen, listen. Let me explain the whole scene for you. A prophet is brought by Balak and he said, Cause koinonia make things to start going wrong for people are we together now balaam tells them look oh i am a prophet 
in other words i don't speak the way i want so as we stand here whatever you hear me say is what god is saying agreed they said agreed so they brought gifts balaam would have sought god by lifting his face to the hills that's the key sammy said i will lift up my eyes to the hills they know where their help comes from but now balaam used enchantment so that god would not be able to prophesy through him are you getting the story he used divination to invoke spirits so that they will prophesy so balaam stood and after he used those enchantments he was about to curse and his mouth produced blessings and he was surprised he moved to another place again and used invocations about to speak and he blessed them he went to another place about to speak and he blessed them and balaam said balak was angry and he said what is all this i brought you to cause them all that has been coming out of your mouth is blessings please watch this and balaam lifted his eyes to check they were on a mountain and he said no i'm a prophet let me look what is the reason why no cause is working and this is what he saw hallelujah and he saw israel abiding in what his tent there was a spiritual formation from the valley israel were wise people they didn't just say let's rest they said ah it is possible that the kings will come and destroy us so let us engage the formation there is a pattern mm. They arranged themselves according to their tribes with the ark of God being at the center. And they said, let's see who will curse us. They kept the ark there. So when Balaam stood at the mountain to curse, the ark fought him back. And he said, I don't know what is wrong. I can't curse them. I can't curse them. Then listen to what he said. According to their tribes. And finally the spirit of God came upon him. This is what he said the secret and he took a parable that's how prophets remember Hosea chapter 12 I have spoken in similitudes of parables I have multiplied visions he took a parable and he said Balaam the son of Beor had said speaking about himself and the man whose eyes are open talking about himself had said verse 4 and he had said which heard the words of God which saw the visions of the almighty falling into a trance but having his eyes open verse 5 how goodly are thy tents O Jacob and thy tabernacles O Israel that's the secret I look at your tent and your spiritual formation and I see you arranged in a way that no cause no enchantment that's why he said no divination no enchantment against jacob it's not just because they are christians please listen to what i'm teaching you now there was a spiritual pattern and literally bala as a true prophet could not cause them they didn't fight they just could not cause them when it was 10 in set in second chronicles 20 verse 20 Oh, well we we'll read from verse 15 downwards if there's time they were about to fight three kings came together to fight them and the bible said they had another formation Kai. these guys use formations for victory not stories they inquired of the lord what pattern will produce the result and they said let the worshipers be in front and when the worshipers were in front together with the ark the warriors were behind he said this is not an issue of sword and they began to sing hearken all judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem and thou king jehoshaphat thus saith the lord be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but the lord's let's read down quickly tomorrow go up against them and so on and so forth 17. listen he said ye shall not what set yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the lord O judah and jerusalem fear not or be dismayed tomorrow you go up against them verse and joseph had bowed his head this and that and that verse 19 there's something i'm looking for now listen and the levites and the children of the Kohathites and of the children of all of those people stood up to what praise the lord of the lord god of israel with a loud voice on high right and then of course 
they rose early in the morning and then when they began to praise you know a prophecy came next verse he says and when he had consulted the people he appointed what look at the formation who did he appoint do you use musicians to fight war musicians to fight war three kings about to kill you i hope you know they were not acting it was real death but there was a pattern he says and they should praise the beauty of his holiness and as they went out before the army and to say praise the lord for his mercy endured forever what happened and when they began to sing and to praise the lord set ambushment against the children of ammon moab and mount Seir, which were come against judah and were smitten next verse for the children of this stood up to slay themselves read the last sentence if you're a christian want to read everyone help to destroy military people killing themselves there were two left and he said who dies first say you either kill the other person and killed himself while they were doing that other people were there invoking a pattern listen there's something i teach the school of ministry students called the reflection principle listen i want to teach you something very powerful it's a principle that is used in occultism it's a principle that is used it was an an aberration of god's principle listen you only host a spirit and a dimension of the possibility of a spirit if you create the atmosphere for that spirit to feel at home as though it were in its primary place of habitation are you getting what i'm saying so if the ambassador of u.s comes to the u.s consulate office in abuja it was designed to accommodate him his appetites the colors the architecture are we together there is a pattern based on the ideology of the united states they built the embassy that way so whether he is in nigeria or he's in america it does not make any difference to him because the embassy in nigeria reflects the dexterity and the glory of america are we together now watch this if i want a spirit any spirit please give me this sir. sorry no if i want a spirit assuming i'm a herbalist i am not a herbalist assuming i'm a herbalist are we together and i want a spirit to come upon this i'm not just going to say spirit come spirit break out and then you think it will come no there is i must find out what that spirit is and the nature of its operation and the kind of atmosphere that makes it come and i will make this water become like the atmosphere the spirit must come atmospheres are magnets they draw spirits and they draw possibilities to the earth and to territories please listen to this this is very important so this is what the psalmist said the holy ghost wanting to come into the new creation he said a body has thou prepared you prepared it in such a way that when i come into that body it will be as though i am in heaven when the body was prepared the spirit could come and that body today is called the ecclesia the body of christ it was built in a particular way christ the foundation the apostolic and the prophetic and then the, it rises and he said that body you have prepared for me so god is able to function on earth because of the body that has been prepared for him are we together now when during our traditional festivals when they want to see certain spirits what do the masquerades do or the priest they wear a particular attire having a particular kind of animal skin alligator skin then some use snakes some use hyenas come on talk to me africa are we together so we have don't don't act as if you came from 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 the middle east we're here we're home amen they use fire they provoke these spirits 
they start chanting tongues and start moving in a particular direction they can move here small and come back again they can run and come back while they are doing that someone can be playing drums are we together and then at a particular point the snake will start coming out when the snake starts coming out they start dancing and putting fire because the snake is reflecting what is happening in the realm of the spirit so the gods are now coming the moment that happens what happens it's like people are under the anointing even the priests they are under their anointing they start doing crazy things they took fire in their mouth and nothing happens because a spirit landed let me tell you why it landed there was a pattern I counseled one man um, on on Tuesday on Wednesday in Abuja before I came he's one of the popular Nigerian directors directors of Nigerian film you know and all of that and he told me something he said man of God most of the Nigerian films you see us acting the snake we use they are real snakes but what they do is they go to charmers you know these guys are charm snakes so they give them a particular ring so that they can pick the snake and nothing will happen the ring has a pattern it's a language the snake understands that's why sometimes it backfires because those powers expire they must be renewed if at the point of expiration you are the one holding the snake the snake that you were you were in nice romance with would turn and enjoy you immediately are we together patterns so there are men whose lives are patterns you curse them it returns back to you and you are wondering see it is on this basis that you can say i am uncursable now the problem with the church is we say revelations without we we make statements without the spiritual revelation that activates those possibilities i am uncursable in the name of jesus and you find out there's a curse at work in your life clearly everybody knows you are cursed you yeah, am not cursed you are cursed we are seeing it it is on the strength of this there is a pattern don't laugh are we together so someone can vow like they vow to paul and they said paul we will not eat nor drink until you are until you die and paul lived many years afterwards i'm teaching you something you can do on earth that is is like a spiritual formation that will make the Holy Spirit respond to you in a certain way and you will see doors open and you'll be wondering what happened is a pattern Balaam stood on the mountain and he saw the pattern and he said I can't cause them I'm trying I'm making efforts listen I can't tell you how many times on my way to travel people will call me and say apostle I just had a dream are you about to travel i say yes they say please sir don't travel i love you so much koinonia loves you i just had a dream this morning and in that dream i saw a plot and i saw that you had a ghastly motor accident and you died and then i said okay i appreciate now they are not they are not lying they saw it and what they saw was correct but there is a pattern kabarato satayaba David, I'm come and sing a song there, my spirit. Your influence is all over me, right? I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. And your influence is all over me. Let's say.
Listen now. Listen. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to kingdom advancement, don't just think of your personal spiritual life alone. There are limitations to your personal spiritual life as far as kingdom advance is concerned. There are certain strategies of witchcraft that it takes more than you as a person to conquer. It's not that Christ is not King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Please hear me is a law there are formations there are things that have been engaged that requires the strength of the body not your strength alone if you do not understand this you will have a lot of casualties and you will mock yourself spiritual patterns formations that make men forbidable on earth they wanted to curse you just like somebody from your village now wants to curse you and you have been saying in the name of Jesus I'm uncursable I agree with you potentially but you have to engage the mystery that makes your word valid otherwise you will be shouting I will not be cursed until they, they, they kill you like a chicken are we together please listen listen There are three of these spiritual patterns that I want you to learn tonight. I don't know if we can touch all three, but we'll stop somewhere and pray. The first of that pattern listen is the power of altars an altar is a pattern I'm not talking altar like coven no an altar is a token that represents a point where covenants are enacted every time a covenant is enacted an altar is raised on earth as a memorial you see that all through in scripture every time people had covenants with God or with themselves they raised what altars an altar is nothing diabolic at all an altar is just a token it's a representation it doesn't even have to be physical a representation please listen a representation a platform that affords covenant to not only be renewed not only be remembered but to be activated three things happen on altars renewal right continuity or servicing if you want to call it and then the third is activation spiritual realities are activated upon altars listen please listen every man of God every true ministry called of God has an altar they may not call it altar they may call it all kinds of things some call it covenant some call it altar I don't care what they call it but this is what it is it is a token that represents a covenant between God and that man and serves as a memorial the altar that was raised in the day of of um, Noah when he raised that altar there was a sign of a rainbow is that true and God gave this as a token when circumcision itself is a token I hope you know when you circumcise a child it's a revelation 
that was given to Abraham circumcised them Joshua circumcised them the power and the revelation of the patterns that altars create are things we should never take for granted especially in such a wicked world koinonia has an altar you hear us sing that song my it's nothing diabolic i don't mean babala or something no, that's not what i'm talking about as a person there are covenants that i've had through my encounters with god that have become the platforms upon which certain possibilities ride the same way i have gleaned upon the covenant of others with god and it has become an advantage it has boosted my personal spiritual life it has boosted the possibilities that i can see in my own life please hear me and i want you to be sensitive we're about to pray be very sensitive right now when abel died when cain killed abel what cried please answer me what cried and he said the blood of abel cries and the blood is speaking abel is dead the blood is saying revenge you have to bring vengeance upon cain and jesus now says that even his blood too speaks the only difference is that his blood speaks better things which were predicated on a better covenant are we together there are altars that speak over the lives and the destinies of men please listen 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 i want to give you spiritual intelligence you don't bind an altar it was enacted by covenant it's called the law of displacement there are two lights they keep shining until a greater light comes then it overshadows them are we together these are spiritual laws so many people do not know the foundation upon which their predicaments are coming they think it's just an issue of personal retreat for three days have you seen people who are praying and fasting on the last day of the fast what they were praying against is what happens maybe somebody sleeps with you in a dream and you charge and get angry and you go and say look three days i'm praying on the third day drive fast you are looking like a skeleton you are about to break you just decided to take a nap for the last 30 minutes and here the person comes i said your prayer made nonsense in the prayer you are shouting, jesus jesus and the person is just looking at you and say keep shouting your jesus there and comes to do exactly what he said to do you know i know this thing so well because it happened in my life have you've heard my story wicked spirits will come and oppress me and come into my room my own was not even an experience I see them they see me but I couldn't do anything about it some of you say I shouted Jesus the pastor shouted well you shouted it well nothing happened please don't laugh I'm giving you a mystery because we're about to pray are we together we have lost the advantage of the patterns that God gave the body it's not about an individual's personal success there are times when the secret to your breakthrough is based on alignment to covenants that God has had and he will respond to you and have respect for the covenant are we together there are people who have a covenant with God that every time they show up in a city there must be breakthroughs so they show up in a city to have a crusade and when they show up to have a crusade people who have no business with that crusade receive breakthroughs that have nothing to do with that ministry because for as long as that individual is there that territory has an advantage of tapping into the covenant that he has are you getting what i'm saying there are people who personally their prayer life is dead but when they get to the prayer department on Tuesday to pray, you find out that you who are struggling to pray for five minutes, you now stretch for two hours. It's because something picked you. That's why you can go back home and say, ah, ah. So it is God's system to help you so that even when your spiritual life is down, Satan will still not be able to reach you. 
before you come back to life there is a system that covers you altars that we can take advantage of there are men who when they come into a city you know everything shakes it's not by the loudness of the publicity but they come in with the presence they carry they come in with the covenants that they carry and you find out that there are strange results strange testimonies that happen to people and then they leave we'll find somewhere and stop i want to pray my life has changed like day and night because of this truth that i have discovered i found it as a key because there were certain limitations in my life though anointed though a great man of god though having encounters with jesus at a point in my life there were certain mountains that would not move there were certain doors that would not open regardless of what i did and i said lord but your word says if i have faith like a monster seed i know that i have faith and then god began to teach me for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause many do sleep because they cannot discern the body their inability to discern the body that has been prepared to host the spirit everything is possible but you need to know how to make it possible you need to know how to make it possible this night looking at me and hearing me by the thousands are men and women who have done certain things alone you have struggled spiritually you love god you have held on to some of these principles but the truth is that door has refused to open you have done what you know to do i show you the third key you must engage it's called the power of alignment to covenants the power of alignment to covenants the power of alignment to covenants god has entered covenants with individuals he has entered covenants with systems please i can beg you some of you are looking for admission listen to what i'm telling you and get into school otherwise sit down there roaming around that you have 230 and repeat the same nonsense that has been going on some things in life will not move just by your personal faith do you know that when jesus was on earth he was not the only miracle worker please answer me is that true there was a time his disciples saw other people who were not in jesus's camp but they were still performing miracles not by bell not Beelzebub. And they say, ah, Jesus, this is, this is strange. Ah, I thought you were the Savior. And he said, I paraphrase him. I came to introduce something new. But until the new comes, the old is still valid. There was a way miracles were done in the old covenant. There were people who believed it. There was a priesthood that made it possible. For instance, an angel would come and steer the water. Was Jesus around when it happened? No, but it happened. A particular prophet in the Bible when a woman was sick or someone was sick he made herbs leaves and put it on the legs of the person are we together if you understand what I'm teaching you then you will know that when you stand and the mountains look like they are not you have done all you know to do listen stop trying harder the key is not harder the key is step back and look at the body of christ don't look at yourself again look at the body of christ what spiritual tribe is connected to the possibility that will open the door i'm looking for you can be a man of god full of grace and prayer but you know that there is no prosperity in your ministry and you are saying lord we have prayed we have fasted this prosperity thing is not working step back and look at the body of christ a body has thou prepared for me sometimes god can give you just one instruction 
go to any living faith branch hold what you have as a seed and go and sow it in that you don't even have to be prayed for the moment you pray for it you go back and God says fine what you have done is called alignment to a covenant and God begins to relate with you the same way he relates with God's servant Bishop David Oedipo and you will find out mysteriously mysteriously something happened recently somebody called me and they had a court case recently and this court case humanly speaking was already against the person there is no human way on earth he would have won that case and when he called me I said tell me the truth when he told me everything ah, I said you're in trouble you're in trouble because I, I, I know a bit about legalities and I know that based on that thing if he's to spend time in the prison it will be nothing less than 10 years away from his wife and his children but I told him I said well I don't know what to tell you but if you can believe what I want to tell you there can be a way out I told him I said I can pray for you God has given me grace for territories and I want to pray for you I prayed for that guy do you know I got to find out he didn't even show up on the day of because of fear he didn't show up in the court he refused to show up and later he would tell me that the judge looked and looked at everything and threw away the case from the court now please brothers and sisters please you went to school you are intelligent in Nigeria who does that <sighs> you right you ancient Zion's king Kadosh Kadosh You are mighty on your throne You reign You ancient Zion's king Kadosh Kadosh You are mighty on your The Bible says Christ is the head of all principalities He recognizes their existence so he says your only advantage is that I am the head not that you say they are not there no it's your Bible I'm teaching you spiritual intelligence but many people say assume they are not there are you kidding when they refuse Jesus from entering back they say who is this king of glory he had to explain himself Christ is the head of principalities he said he has been made above thrones so he recognizes them above dominions and every name that is named not only in this earth but in the world to come what do you not know that is responsible for the devil sinking through your life and making it look like God is not alive please hear what I'm saying a job will not just come because you think you're a Nigerian there are mysteries you have done there are many arrogant pastors in ministry who are suffering this they've done everything to do but the key is an alignment an alignment that opens up spiritual possibilities an alignment those who were Mina I'm sure maybe my friend pastor Peter Rock is listening Peter Rock you know I love house on the rock and all of that when we went to Mina Aaron you were there the same thing you see in Koinonia crowds here overflow on top and then outside is alignment brothers and sisters you may be a musician but you can align to a system that will give you more than songs you will find out that things are opening you are a student but you align to somebody who is paying you salary and they say no you must be sleeping with the man you say no I, I, I just belong to a tribe that has a covenant with God that is respected even by hell let me tell you brothers and sisters what is not at work in your life is still available it takes humility and alignment many people will insult me for what I'm teaching you now because they will think I'm teaching you human worship God is my witness I, I, I don't have time for all of those things but you have to be careful who you listen to don't let men do well meaning to deceive you there are systems on earth that represent spiritual possibilities you may argue it 
and never see certain things happen in your life please hear me look beyond your personal strength and look at the privileges that God has put in the body a body has thou prepared for me a body has thou prepared this koinonia that you look at every time maybe one day I will take out time and share the whole journey so that you will know that this is not just an ambition of a man to have a ministry if I want fame there are easier ways I'm not dull I can write books are we together access to the riches and the blessings of heaven there are covenants you align with that will open you up to possibilities I don't want to begin to give you testimonies upon testimonies hallelujah we're already preparing to buy our land I will not tell you where it is until we buy it some of you will be surprised you will open your mouth and say it's a lie you can't get land like that a property that will swallow CGC how many times in this area because when you catch the keys listen 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 I don't say this to brag I'm challenging you it's, it's not by trying no door opens to shouting it opens to keys God is giving you something now you have been writing jam you are brilliant but it's not working don't stay foolish and say I, I, I know this time around I, I got 250 no are we together possibilities there are men and women who God has put in the body of Christ in territories that's why Satan creates a lot of controversy around their life to fight them so that what you are supposed to receive will not be given to you but as we pray the devil is a liar somebody's door is about to be opened rise up on your feet everybody and let's pray we are going to pray three prayer points and I want you to pray it with every every ounce of strength no carelessness no looking around you are going to cry to God prayer point number one Lord I acknowledge that I am limited as a person no matter how spiritual I am as a pastor as an apostle as a prophet as a teacher as an individual I am limited and I come before you with every sense of humility acknowledging my limitation lift your voice and pray Lord I acknowledge Lord I acknowledge I acknowledge that you have built a system you have built a system beyond the personal spiritual progress of a man you have designed this mystery called the body of Christ this strategy called the body of Christ to lift men to bail them out of captivity you have designed this mystery called the body of Christ Hallelujah. Look up, please. Prayer point number two. I want you to be sincere before God. Mention all the things you know you have tried and done all you know to do but has not changed. Mention it before God because we are about to engage a mystery. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I've prayed over this failure in my family. Nothing has seemed to change. Say, 
Make sure you're praying. Those online, make sure you're praying. for himself so Jesus had to come and man's salvation now is tied to his alignment to the finished work of Christ it's a pattern there are times your victory will be based on the finished work of others not just of Christ but they have cried the cry for you so you don't cry again they have taken the scars for you so you don't take it again but if you do not know satan will cheat you there are times you will stand before that red sea please hear me just the same bar, please you stand before the red sea and the red sea will refuse to part you will you will invoke your personal altar it will not open let me tell you there are stubborn challenges like that in the life of a man. You will agree with your wife, your husband. It will not move. When all else fail, switch. Switch. Remember what tribe you belong to. Remember the spiritual possibilities that come. And say, oh God of salvation. Remember, 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 remember. 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 And all of a sudden, your God will arise, not for your sake. Listen, hear me. I don't know if it's a tight booklet of redeemed or living faith. I can't remember which of them. But there was a woman who had been a faithful titan. I don't know if it's redeemed or living faith. One of the ministries, she testified. And robbers came to her house and assassins to kill her and kill her husband. They stepped into the house. They were with guns. The man was there. His wife was there. All that there was was to shoot. And there was nothing to do. The man just, he knew he was gone. All else failed. And all the woman did was to bring out her tight booklet. And dropped it on the ground. 
remember the covenant is it not your house that was built with my money is it not souls that are saved with my money don't waste your time trying to say one day God will come no that one day you can create it the day the pattern is there as powerful as Jesus was his heavens were closed until he had to encounter a man the heavens of Jesus did not open because he was called Jesus it was open based on the covenant that came down to John the Baptist and so when John the Baptist saw Jesus he said behold the lamb and he said that's not the issue my heavens are closed and he said suffer it to be so I can't neglect the pattern and when John dipped Jesus and brought him out there was a transference and God responded the heavens opened and he said this is my beloved son please hear me it's not as hard as your life makes it look you just don't know what to do we are going to cry and say Lord show me what I must do to come out of this challenge in my presence lift your voice and pray there is always something to do. Koinonia cry. Show me, oh God, what is the secret, the missing link to my healing ministry, the missing link to bring prosperity to my life. Hey. Who are thou mounting before Zerubbabel? There is a mystery, there is a pattern, there is a mystery, there is a pattern. Let hope rise. Darkness when losing your hope be light. Let hope, let it rise, let it rise, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your own. Hallelujah. Listen, we are going to pray. Please look up, everybody. We are going to pray. Just one more prayer, and I will pray for us. I'd like you to pray. This ground, no, I don't mean physical ground, but this mystery called koinonia is, is enshrined in strange covenants that are responsible for possibilities. Now, please pay attention. We're about to pray strategic prayer. Are we together? I'd like you to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I invoke the covenant that is upon this ministry. The possibilities that your appearance the sacrifices are brought i invoke it upon my life pray the covenant of open doors the covenant of his shatina glory access to kings access to strange favor Pastors pray Let it come upon my ministry Oh God Pray Let it come upon my life Say Kamariana Malana Namasiri Lord, I've written this jam by my strength. I've tried and tried, but I invoke the covenant. 
Lord, I've tried to make money by my strength. I've fasted. I've sown seed. I invoke the covenant. Lord, I've tried to get a job. I've tried to get a job. It's not working. I cry to the God of heaven. Let hope, let hope, let it rise tonight. Let it rise tonight. The covenant of long life. Habarata kata frata kata bela de bokosodo. The covenant of honor, strange honor, access to king. Access to nobles, access to royalties, access to power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you pray this next prayer, listen, there will be strange impartations and strange testimonies on people. This, these are testimonies coming from heaven. Are we together? I want you to pray it with all your heart. All your heart. All your heart. Listen. Listen. See, that you are part of this great house is no guarantee that you will enjoy the blessings that come. It must be intentional. Proximity is not connection. Are we together? Proximity is not connection. I have tapped into the covenant that God has had with people who have gone higher than me and they have opened me to strange doors. Realms that I know are not realms that are as a result of my personal prayer life. I'm a product of many anointings, many graces, many spiritual possibilities. Please hear what I'm telling you and step into a strange, I show you a deep mystery. Many of you will not appreciate it until you struggle and life whips nonsense out of you. You will come back to this message and it will make sense to you. There are many ministries that are anointed but they may never grow. They have done all they need to do. They have prayed. There are groups. There are all kinds of sincere people around. You've done all you know to do. Listen, you were not designed to do everything as regards your growth by yourself. That's why God put the body. A body has thou prepared. A body has thou prepared. Are we together? There are mysteries. When a Jimmy shared with me the supernatural birth of his wife, I couldn't believe it. In minutes, she had given birth. Case closed. Because there are mysteries you engage. Are we together? Please hear what I'm saying. You see Hope standing. You see Aaron's wife standing. Almost as if they didn't give birth. Right? There is a mystery. What you don't know does not mean it cannot work. You just don't know how to make it work. Are we together? We are going to pray one last prayer with all your heart. Every area you know must work in your life. Listen, listen, listen. It pleases the Lord when you have testimonies. It pleases the Lord. There are some of us, certain sicknesses are killing us. No you've taken drugs, you've done everything without your imagination. There are, there, are, there are graces that we have seen. Sometimes, all it takes is recognition to say, Lord, I tap into this grace. I shared with you my story when I went to sow a seed to God's servant, Bishop David Oedeko. And when I came out, the Lord asked me, kneel down on the ground, bare ground that ground I laid my hands upon it it's not about idolizing altars and all of that no 
and he said lay your hands on the ground i laid my hands on the bare ground and the lord said from this day you have entered the overflow anointing are we together it was an old woman who prophesied upon my life and said my son forever you will walk upon gold that's what that mama told me till tomorrow to whether she's a human being or an angel i don't know i bought sugar cane of 50 naira sugar cane of 50 naira changed my destiny forever Are we together? You join them, you will die like them. Listen to what I'm telling you. There are many arrogant people in our society who believe they know what they are doing. Even when they are quartered to destruction, they will still be bragging. If you are not seeing results for a long time in your life, please calm down and find out what is it. Thank God for the area you are seeing results. But what of the areas where there are no results? We are going to pray. And you are going to cry to the God of your salvation in one minute and say, Lord, the unction the grace, the unction that must land upon my life now for those doors to open. If it did not come through my personal prayer life, then I take advantage of this spiritual formation that is in this house. I take advantage of this spiritual formation. Are we praying? Go ahead and pray. I'm about to pray for you, but pray. Lord you didn't heal me from the pain and God said did you do what was told to do the day an instruction was given to celebrate and praise when the Bible says rejoice in the Lord how many times did you commit yourself to obeying it rejoicing not just as what you want to do but as a key to your breakthrough are we together engaging the word let me tell you something the Bible says the kingdom of God that you have to become like a child. Do you know why? Um, in our civilized 21st century society where we are so right conscious, we don't want anybody violating on anything. I, I, you know, don't violate me. I'm a citizen. I'm intelligent. I went to school. We are so right conscious. It's very difficult for us to submit ourselves to the simplicity of the truth of God's word. Are we together now? The word of God declares this is what must be done to receive this outcome we argue we explain intellectually we bring all kinds of even spiritual and theological dissertations to explain away the simplicity and god says well i'm not the one in need you're the one who is looking for the solution look how difficult we make it to get the anointing look how difficult we make it to be prosperous Look how difficult we make it to rise. Look how difficult we make it to get the power of God. Let me tell you the truth. The difficulty is that I think sometimes we preachers do not show people where to engage the word. We dispense the word. But at the end of it, we do not leave our sermons with the action point. The very point. And that's where members don't like. That's why we like prophecies a lot. Because it's an extension of our desire to refuse to act upon the word most members hate it when you commit to them and say okay i have shown you this is now how you engage and they say no no can't you what is prophesy this thing and let me move forward i don't know how many people i counsel and i tell them oh apostle this is what is going on this is this and that and i tell them okay uh, go to the media stand pick one or two messages listen to it and come back I see how they turn and greet somebody and just move around. And highest, they check around and see um, if there is an opportunity for a joke. And they, you know, believers were spiritually lazy. Not because we don't fast and we don't pray, but that point of engaging the word. One of the greatest blessings of the life and the ministry of Bishop David Oyedeko in my life is that among other things his nature of dispensing the word is such that he shows you what to do good master the rich man said what must i do to be saved he wasn't saying can i save myself lord i know that it is within your character to partner with men where is my own part of the deal we hate this talk and you know 
the western world may god bless them we have received so much from them but i think that this this error of allowing god to do everything to show his sovereign claiming that and whether we add anything to it or not it cannot be done no brothers and sisters listen the bible says the heavens even the heaven of heavens is the lord it says but the earth has he given to the sons of men there will always be a cooperation a partnership between god and men for anything serious to happen god is still sovereign but he has chosen to limit himself so that men can also be reflectors of his glory please learn this if anything is to change in your life it is not all up to god there is a part where you have access to light and then engage that light access to it and you engage it not access alone we have done pretty well in understanding it so as i dispense these truths by the grace of god alongside all the men and women of god scattered in this nation and around the world please i like us to make a commitment that we will not only be hearers will not only be receivers in terms of just hearing it into our ears but that we will always search for the areas that will require our own partnership your partnership with the word of god does not negate what god has done your partnership with the word of god is what makes it your experience until you partner with the word of god it remains a prophecy or a promise it is your engaging the word that converts every promise to your testimony to your experience right from the foundations of the earth the lamb has been slain but the day you hand over your life to jesus that's the day salvation becomes your experience is that true the bible says by his stripes we are healed but the day you hear the word you receive it and engage appropriately the bible says again and again that the lord gives men power to prosper but this is not our experience for many of us in the body of christ the day we are willing to not only receive the precepts but sustain the grace you see this is the, this is the true idea of grace i told you grace is like love grace has love has depth height that's how grace is there is a dimension of god's grace that is his unmerited favor or unmerited access that means god kept that dimension exclusive to himself because there is absolutely nothing any man can do for instance the grace that saves men are we together now there is nothing a man can do by his own strength to save himself you can only partner but there is a dimension of grace that is an empowerment to do you will do the doing it's just that the energy is not yours now this is the dimension of the grace of god that the body of christ has not understood so he empowers you with a capacity that is more than what you ordinarily would do then he will grant you grace so he supplies that grace are we together now yes if i prophesy to pastor alpha now i am operating a, i am doing the speaking it is willing he's not opening my mouth i'm opening my mouth by myself but i am communicating an intelligence that is not given to mere men that intelligence you call it the gift of the spirit you call it the prophetic is what the bible calls grace the power to do the power to do bless you sir are we together if we begin to pay attention to engaging the things we already know brothers and sisters i submit to you that our lives will be a thousand times better than it is in every wise the problem truly speaking is not ignorance i told you again and again and i'll continue to say it i do not believe the body of christ as a corporate entity is in ignorance there are still greater lands to conquer in the spirit there are still deeper dimensions that god will open us but you see the system of god is he studies what you have done with what he has given you first and that qualifies you to receive more the parable of the five two and one talent the bible says that when he granted unto them stewardship the one with five talents engaged correct the one with two talents engaged the one with one talent just buried it and left it there when the master came for accountability he said well um you were a hard man 
You like reaping where you don't sow. So I, I just thought instead of wasting my time, I kept it on the ground. I can go and remove your thing, collect your thing. The Bible says they collected it from that man and gave it to the one with five talents. So you see, increase is a product of doing something with the grace and the dimension God has given you. A pastor who will not pastor two members or ten members with all his heart and bless them and sits down pasting pictures of a million members is joking and dreaming. A man of God who will not engage diligently. God gives you 10,000 naira. You mismanage it carelessly. You do not find out the principles of God. There's nothing in it for God. There is no system of accountability and wise use of it. You can't sit down and be mesmerizing on 1 million, 10 million. God does not work like that. Are we together? How about anointings? There are men of God who admire their whole assignment is more power. And God says, calm down. The grace I've given you is enough to save souls. Even if it can't heal sick bodies now. Show how you have engaged that grace enough to be able to open you up to other access. And say, Lord, what is salvation? Anybody can do it. Then God grants you the grace for intercession. And he said, Lord, that one is too hard. I need power, direct, raw power to just prophesy or lay hands. And God says, no, it will never work that way. Never work that way. God is revealing to us as simple as what I'm sharing is. God is showing us the reason why the issues of our lives don't change. It's not because the word of God has failed. It is because we seldom engage the word. We complain. We receive the word. Let me tell you what most of us do. You know, when, when people complain about certain areas, I ask them, have you listened to this, my teaching? Before I finish, they smile. And the person is not getting the result, and he will listen now. He say, have you listened to um, 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 evidence of genuine intimacy? They help you finish it. <laughs> and you look at this guy, and you know that this guy doesn't know God for sure. Are we together now? Yes. Then you tell him, go and listen to it. And he plays around while he's just listening, distracted, doing a lot of things, gisting with friends, and then catching up. And then he tells you, sir, I just finished. There are, there are certain teachings, one hour teaching, but I finished them in three days. One hour teaching in three days. Because every five, five minutes, I'm stopping. Jesus, something just entered my spirit. I see I was studying something there and I almost jumped. I almost jumped from my bed. I said, yeah, yeah, what is this? He said, I've not read this Bible before. I had to look at it again. I found my Bible. Drilled the thing again. I don't know what I caught years ago that made me draw it, but that ink was already fading. I drew a fresh one to remind me that this is a fresh revelation. What? This is the Bible? Opened up another light for me. You finish a three hours message. You never pause <laughs> to listen, to learn. Even when something is very powerful, you are just like, wow, just continue. Even the way you study in school, brothers and sisters, that's not how you do well. You pause. The psalmist will say, Sila, pause, ponder, think, write if need be, pray if need be. Hallelujah. If you don't like what I'm saying, forget about results. God is not a herbalist. Hallelujah. Yes. Look at the aspects of your life. You will see that there are certain areas you are in total ignorance. But you will see that there are certain areas you already have the requisite knowledge, truthfully speaking. You already know what to do and the grace has been supplied. But that spiritual nature, that laziness to comply accordingly and stay until results manifest, that's what causes a lot of trouble. What do you have in your house? Nothing except a cruise of oil. And the prophet said, that's it. Madam, this is what I want you to do. Go. Why didn't the prophet prophesy? Vessels, find your way to this poor woman's house. Say, madam, carry the energy you have left. And go and borrow vessels. He said, borrow not a few. When she came, she met him and said, sir, I've done as you have said. He said, now you qualify for the next instruction. 
close your door. She would never receive the next instruction if she did not obey the last one. Is God speaking to us? Yeah. And he said, close the door. When you close the door, start engaging the oil. The oil has capacity to give you any kind of miracle. But when engaged, and the Bible says she kept pouring and the oil kept multiplying. How about the widow in Zarephath? When the prophet came, he said, woman, how are you? Fine, sir. Water, please. Ah, I don't have much, but I'm a generous woman. And just bake the remaining bread for me. He said, we're about to eat with my son to die. He said, madam, I'm, I'm here not because I'm hungry. I'm here so that you will survive. So just handle this treasure is in eating vessels. You better quickly come and feed me first. The woman would have said, you are such a heartless and stupid man. You are the prophet they've been talking about. You are a wicked man. I would make sure I tell all those who have you are. Ah, ah, you see me and a child. You don't even love women. And start another funny women movement and say, look, there are prophets who don't, they collect things from women. And the Bible says that she, her engaging that thing, all of a sudden she turned and discovered that the flower. I'm showing you how this works. How about three days? They spent three days on the mountain. And then the people said, these guys are hungry. There will be commotion here now. And Jesus said, feed them. Said, ah, feed them. Even a year's worth of food. No miracle could happen until they, there was something from men. And Andrew found a young boy and carried his bread, his, his lunch box as they call it. And all of a sudden, Jesus lifted it and gave thanks and there was multiplication. Who taught you that things happen by themselves? It is the dynamics of the workings in terms of God's part that is none of your business. The Bible says just as you do not know the way bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, not the way of the wind. That's how you cannot tell the work of God. There is a part of this equation that you can never know. It is sponsored by the wisdom of God. For instance, how your destiny helper will come is not your business. Your own is to engage what brings them. Your destiny helper can be a donkey. A donkey needs to be missing for you to find Samuel. Doesn't matter. You think if God asks Saul to choose how he will receive the anointing, will he choose the, the disappearance of a donkey? Leave the acting to God. Your own is obey to the latter. And then you will watch God use anything to act that drama until you receive the anointing. Let me tell you where spiritual fatigue comes. When we want to know how the details. How will I pay my rent? Lord, I know you are faithful, but let's... Let's be honest here. And God is saying, me, you are telling me to be honest? <laughs> Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes. So we don't engage the word at all. At all. Master, if it be thou, bid me come. And Jesus said, really? You want to see a new dimension? I've given you a word. Engage it. Come. All of them stood and said, oh yeah. He didn't say, Peter, come. He just said, come. Whoever walked. He said, come. And all of a sudden, Peter got up and walked. And it was, it, it was surprising, Peter. I'm walking. And he was laughing. And all of a sudden, he was about sinking. Many people see the sinking part. They don't see the part that Jesus stopped him from sinking because he had to be responsible over his word. Peter's mistake at the point of obedience had to be addressed by Jesus himself. If Peter sank, Jesus would be to blame. After all, Jesus knew he was learning. He said, come. Obey him and perish. And watch whether you will perish. Listen, learn this. I'm teaching you how faith works. Peter. He held him and said, no. If you walked on your own, like Jonah, Jonah was not helped because he was in disobedience. So the whale swallowed him. What bailed Jonah out was mercy. Are we together? These are the systems of the kingdom. This is how it works.
guys go and preach in my name heal the sick cast out devils and jesus ah, jesus won't you go with us say no 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 just go i've given you my name say where is it say just believe keep going and when they met the first sick person um my name is sir you saw me with that other guy he really sent us i'm not really sure about this i've not mastered it but i hope you are not offended if i prayed for you and peter laid hands on someone and all of a sudden to his shock peter said this thing is working let's do it again they returned back to jesus and said hi jesus even the devils that we fear so much were subject to us in thy name and jesus said that those are little issues let's talk about don't rejoice because of that be honest with yourself tonight is it really that god has not been faithful or you have not engaged the word you have been told that prayer and fasting are keys for true revival and spiritual power be honest with yourself have you engaged it with understanding don't sit down and say god is not anointing me what do you think the anointing is not a charm you eat anything anywhere anyhow anytime no sir no sir how about breakthrough there are many of us that want breakthrough you hear people the fact that god is doing it to one person that per you see do you know why we allow testimonies the most important part of testimonies is not the result is the bridge between the problem and the solution what did the person do that's what your spirit should be sensitive about for many of us we wait till the end of it then we say wow you mean it this is how i live my life i don't sit down and tell god lord create the changes i say no lord i know i give you all the praise show me my own part and i stand up and start engaging it start engaging it start engaging it what of our family members oh god will you keep watching us like this and god says no listen to joshua selman oh god i don't have the time i'm like i was saying will you keep changing our lives and god says you are violating an ordinance it's not going to change husband is standing wife is standing children are standing devil is destroying that family and wrecking their lives they are arguing with one another and not interested in change god says listen when it comes to this thing you can't help yourself it is by a prophet that the lord brought them out of egypt and by a prophet they were preserved even if you are a midwife when you are about to give birth you need another midwife to help you that you are a midwife does not mean you can deliver yourself listen to this and understand there are systems in the kingdom a time comes when your personal anointing cannot give you the breakthrough you are looking for. is god helping us so so many people arrogantly sit down and say what is there is it not man of god man is it not the same jesus that died for us and they sit down there and their problems continue to compound and multiply whereas there is enough grace to trivialize that problem and reduce 10 years of problems in a moment how long please help me how long listen i think it was in it was in mina over the weekend we were preaching for um bishop it was it was such a an awesome time with him and uh, bishop achaya and i was sharing there i said every anointing listen to me every challenge has the level of anointing that can address it that you are anointed is not generic in results the anointing is levels when your challenges are higher than your level of anointing or the level of anointing close to you you're already in trouble there are three ways to come out of that thing grow in the anointing to a level where it can surmount it or trust god for access to personalities whose price in the spirit has granted them access to the level of grace that can throw away that problem brothers and sisters in my little life i've had the privilege of seeing what the anointing of the spirit how it can rubbish a situation that is within the level the jurisdiction of that anointing to solve it almost in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and that challenge is gone 
but I've also seen how frustrated an anointed man can be in the face of a challenge that is higher than your level of anointing. It will rubbish you as if you have never met God. Believe what I'm teaching you. If the mysteries of the kingdom are not engaged, this family now will get up and say, okay, we have read in the Bible. And let me tell you what happens. They begin to pray. At least it's a starting point. While they pray, the Holy Ghost will take the mother or the father to a scripture and said, study the life of Saul of Kish. Do everything they did. And so they start studying. A donkey was missing. We, for us, an animal was not missing. Let me show you how the, the Holy Spirit helps people. What is missing? Joy, peace, love, breakthrough, finances, spiritual upliftment. What did they do? They started moving around and a servant said, let's go and meet a man of God. And the Holy Spirit says, go and do likewise. And they stand up and the Holy Spirit now tells them, look, there's a miracle service coming. You see, the word of God is becoming alive. You are acting. You can sit down at home and say, God has brought it. He said we should go for the miracle service and then give all kinds of flames you excuses. It is raining. I'm not very happy. I didn't eat well. We were not joyful yesterday. Those things are the ways demon spirits keep people. But when you stand up as you are walking to come, heaven is recording your obedience and already scheduling the system for your miracle. Now, while you are coming, you are not even sure you will meet me, but you are coming anyway. While you are coming, you are not even sure you will have space. But you are coming anyway. Are you seeing how this thing works? You come anyway and you sit down. And to your greatest shock, it was never for you to meet me. While the praise and worship is on, fire lands on your situation. And all of a sudden, you see someone calling you repeated calls and you have to avoid it. After Konya or whatever program, you just go and check and someone is calling you and saying, sir, Remember, we were supposed to strike a deal and it didn't work. I, my spirit was moving me and you say, God, this is you. Let me show you how breakthrough happens. Breakthrough is worked. It's like the working of miracles. You know how you cook food. You don't drop onions, pepper, fish, whatever it is you drop on the table and just shout and say, food, cook. No, you work it. How do you work it? You get a pot firewood or whatever you are using you start engaging sometimes it will be painful as you are cutting something knife can cut you but you are more interested in the food than that temporary pain it's by eating the food the pain will be healed so continue and at the end of it you have a lovely meal and everybody who comes around wonders brothers and sisters it is true that God gave grace but you worked it are we together this part of engaging the word is what I want. I want to drum it into our spirits. Nothing will change in your life just because you are a Christian. The word of God must be engaged. Hallelujah. Mm. Sacrifices, praise, several things. You must engage the word of God. There are some of us here, you have never sown a seed I'm not saying to me, please don't get what I'm saying. But you have never, most of us is 95% receiving, 5% giving. You will be broke forever. That's the equation of poor people. Are we together? Yes. Give me, your own is to collect. Lord, who is going to give me? And the Lord says, when are you going to create your own harvest? Have you not heard that if the cloud be full of rain, if you use a spoon to, spend, to send vapor to the air, you will spend your whole life. There are other people who don't allow challenges to last. They walk it till it gives up. They walk it till it gives up. I believe in results. I'm motivated by results. I'm very, very outspoken about results. I'm not one of those people who lie to you and say it doesn't matter. It matters, sir. Results matter. Human beings were designed to remain motivated when what you engage produces is that true yes when a woman gets pregnant we're happy for her pregnancy and we can endure everything that the pregnancy carries provided there will be a child at the end is that true yes 
when somebody like the people sharing now the lady that was sharing about the rigor that she went through you know not the most important thing is that finally the result is cleared and all of that when you do things the pain is when you put so much energy and time and then it does not yield results this is what i want to cancel from our life hallelujah breakthroughs are predictable hmm. the help of god is predictable the mercy of god is predictable results are predictable please my brother my sister let me beg us in the name of jesus to not sit down and hope things change i'm delivering you from it because after 10 years it will remain like that until it changes there are people who as of january this year wrote down a list of certain things they submitted it and asked questions lord how do i engage with you and right now god has ticked those things with results there are others all they do every miracle services god arise for me they drop it every instruction god gave from january till now they have not done one lift up your hands they won't lift up pray they won't pray celebrate god dance around all these things how can i be a, a child we left these things am i in a party see that i told you about dancing i don't like dancing it's not anything i admire at all but it's a it's a key you know how drugs are how you swallow drugs sometimes when you swallow drugs especially maybe a syrup it can be so bitter especially when you are giving children they are trying to deny but your love keeps them there swallow it when they swallow it you pamper them later on swallow it do you pity the child say, oh yeah i'll leave you like that no that's how it is when you are obeying god don't pity yourself oh no sir don't pity yourself abraham carried isaac and said up we go when he kept looking at isaac i love you but this one see be careful some of us get too emotionally connected to every area of our lives that is difficult for us to get to the next level you are emotionally connected to your money you are emotionally connected to your title you are emotionally connected to whatever that's why it is difficult for us to give up things to go high you are emotionally connected to your ministry my ministry The word of God works. It is reliable. This is how God has helped us by his mercy to be where we are today. And this is how he will help us to rise. But the key is that we engage the word. The key is that we engage the word. We don't sit down and make God responsible for everything and laugh around and fool ourselves. That's not faith. No, that's not faith. You must take inventory of your life. You'll be surprised to know that this is not even my message this night. I just came and this thing started boiling in my spirit. God is my witness whom I serve. That I am passionate about seeing every one of us produce results. See, let me tell you. If you are a man of God and you are the only one rising, you are, you are a big failure doesn't matter what you whether it's car house no i rather fail as a person and you succeed your success will turn me into a success you see that let me be honest with you in all sincerity some of the things i teach you god has helped me in those areas so it's not like i'm teaching with any interest for myself I'm hearing a song in my spirit. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah thine the glory revive us hallelujah lord i want to become a public speaker you dropped it here you have not engaged the word you found a scripture but you have not done anything with it lord i want to become a man of god and the only thing you are thinking about is starting a church you know sometimes sometimes the way the way we pastors behave is why we keep struggling forever brothers and sisters if you have eight days to cut a tree use seven days sharpening the knife use seven solid days stand in the sun and sharpen the knife i promise you you will hit that tree once and it will fall but you can carry a blunt knife axe and even if they give you 90 days the tree will not fall hallelujah don't jump into things take out quality time to engage this thing engage this thing God is calling, let me use you promise, come. God is calling promise into ministry, for instance. Go and start a ministry in Delta or start a ministry in U.S. And the, the only thing he does is, just says, wow, I, I have learned enough. You just jump and go to Delta. And after five years, you are still roaming around as if God didn't call you. In that five years, those who engage the world are swimming in grace. Whereas you are there frustrating the grace of God. After 10 years, you now leave it and say you want to go and join military or police. They say your age has passed. You now say you want to join something else and your life. And you blame God. And God says, no, you refuse to engage the word. I told you time never changes anything. It only reveals. Time reveals whether you have been engaging properly or you have been wasting your time. But God calls this guy now and he sits down, Lord, what kind of ministry are you giving me? Oh, this is this. And he's studying, he's learning, he's building. How do we do church finances in a way that you don't play pranks on people? He's learning. How do we build membership? When members cross 500, how do you manage them? You are learning. How do I grow in the anointing? When I have three to five sermons to preach every week how do i manage it with my family life what if i have a business running how do i manage it this gentleman works on himself i tell you he gets up and in one year start a ministry and all the forces that should be there are there everything done whereas another person is struggling and angry. Now, this is, anger is usually a product of frustration. When you try to do things and you are angry and someone comes and it becomes effortless. You see, one of the proof of mastery is how effortless you are. When you, when you execute your plans effortlessly, how are you doing it? And people begin to coin explanations. I don't want to live a life of a failure. I don't want to. Number one, it does not glorify God. Number two, it's going to waste my time. Number three, there are many people connected to me in the spirit and my failure is going to affect them and destroy them and tear their lives into pieces. One of my greatest fears, if I have any, is to walk, and, to walk with God for a long time and then to find that the things are believed. I lie. That's why I'm meticulous about the construction of my beliefs. Lord, what I believe about finances, is it accurate? What I believe about the anointing, is it accurate? What I believe about fasting and prayer, is it accurate? I'm not ashamed though. If at any point I find out there is a problem, I'm not ashamed. I, okay, Lord, let's look at this. This is what I used to believe. But now I'm seeing, I'm learning this. Wow, amazing. I'm growing and you are just let me tell you something there are many anointings to lift our family members but it is at the mercy of their engaging they only complain and insult they insult every anointing that can bring them breakthrough and they sit down and hope and wish they will learn 
You will be surprised, and I don't mean to be sarcastic. You will be surprised to know how many people live within this vicinity who have never received of what God is doing. It will be shocking and surprising. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, the trouble is, you are the one who is the patient. Who cries, the patient or the hospital? Please talk to me. When the patient insults the hospital, does the hospital have tears? The hospital will, will be busy treating those who are ready. Is that true? Lord, I don't want to live my life as a failure. Results can be commanded. This thing has been done before. I'm not asking you where you grew up, whether it's in your village or whatever. I'm not asking what has happened in your life. Brothers and sisters, this anointing we talk about is God's own ability. But are we willing to engage it to produce the required result? Do it honorably and fail. And the Lord will do for you what he did for Peter. He held his hand and lifted him. This is how God brought some of us, my brother, my sister. It's not as if anybody signed and gave any guarantee and said, start ministry if you need money, we'll support you. Start ministry if you need members. No, 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 no. Engaging by faith. When people see the results, they trivialize it. Sometimes people just talk all kinds of things. But then they do not know that these things were engaged. Access is not enough. The word, the truth, the mystery, the principle, the revelation must be engaged. It must be engaged. It must be engaged. There is a part you have to play. Play it and watch God. Watch God arise for you. As a mighty God and turn things around for you. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? This thing does not take time. It just takes commitment. If I'm building a house, listen, and I have workers building a house for me and they are working, they start working by six and by night. There are those who do night shift and are working. Is that true? And there is another lazy builder. The workers come by 10, they close by 2. Whose house will be built first? You see that now? The amount of commitment you give to this thing determines the result it will deliver to you. There is no way around it. I watch our fathers of faith and I'm surprised that with the kind of results they command, you still see them engaging this thing. They are winning it with all their heart. I was watching a video by Dr. Paul Enenche, and um, I'm saying this only because he said it. He was preaching this year at um, Bill Winston's ministry and the Lord's Garden, the magnificent structure that they are building around the airport road in Abuja. And he said just for the, the zinc alone, just to cover that place, they are spending 16 million US dollars zinc not building 16 million us dollars in a time of recession debt free now only a fool and a stupid person 16 million dollars will more than answer the request of many ministries times 10 and this is what is used for zincing so a wise person says this is the result i'm looking for it is on earth already happening in someone's life so what do you do you follow them who through faith and patience, what did he engage? Because he was not born like that. As at 1999, God's servant, Dr. Paul Enenche was in one room in Abuja. There were people who were in the houses, they are still there today. Because they didn't engage anything. As at 99, he was there with his wife in one room. And all of a sudden rises to do something. There are people still there today. Brothers and sisters, if your life must change, it's not up to God alone. God's power is available. I have indoctrinated myself into being a responsible believer that nothing will ever change just like that. Hallelujah. 
what are you doing in partnership with the word of god do you understand the principle and the mystery that connects your challenge or your desire and the outcome do you understand then if yes are you engaging completely the future will show the mysteries and the things that koinonia is engaging is is not it's not something to blow trumpet and talk about now but the future will tell what is being engaged today you see that something i do not know is responsible for where i am something i know but have not believed is also responsible for where i am something i have believed but i've not acted upon consistently is responsible for where i am while you are seated can you pray cry to god and say lord i repent i've been handing over the responsibility of my results entirely to you but now i have heard you i have seen it very clearly that nothing will change by itself are you praying some of you are looking at others forget about them and cry for your destiny apostle i graduated since five years ago nothing has happened in my life show me what you are engaging first let me see what you have done i thought i would have a job who told you you will have a job just like that show me the mystery you engage and the mystery you are engaging keep praying show me what you are engaging apostle i expected that by now i should not be begging for food to feed my family show me what you are engaging or are you just waiting for things to happen show me apostle i expected by now that my ministry should be strong enough financially show me what you are engaging let me see it apostle i expected that by now i should be flowing at certain levels of the prophetic certain levels of the anointing show me what you are engaging sir i expect that i should be established by now i should have had a car and a house show me what you are engaging don't just wish for nothing i've been coming to church that's not enough what have you engaged pray nothing will ever change my brother my sister access to truth is not enough it must be engaged though access to truth is not enough apostle i've listened to all your messages on favor wonderful have you done what was said in the message consistently have you done what was said in the message having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and only when your obedience is complete let's not turn god to a game player playing pranks and 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 expect strange results pray you don't commit 30 minutes to god 30 minutes of your life the remaining part of your life and you want to carry fire which god are we talking about here prayer zero word life zero passion and hunger for spiritual things zero and you want to carry the anointing no sir no sir no sir no sir show me the time you commit to study show me the time you commit to sacrificing your sleep show me how you engage with the world show me the videos you watch show me the retreats the times alone that you spend with god and i can tell you why your result is the way it is it's not magic it's not magic it's not magic hallelujah listen to me you know let me say this honestly there are many men of god who see ministries that god has blessed with crowds like this 
and they do not know the enormous responsibility of pastoring thousands of people they think all about standing here sometimes you see me stand here let me confess and tell you truly most of the time i stand here most times i'm waiting on god is when i go back that i eat something there are times that the water you see me take here is the first thing that is entering my stomach as i stand i'm not saying that's what you must do after service you see me stand here to see people sometimes past 12 last week i went home to one don't want crowd if you cannot engage what is going to be there are we together now yes, we want things without the responsibility attached to it you before you barely rest someone has woken you there is a challenge you when i came you saw me talking on phone and i called the protocol because they needed to respond to an emergency somewhere the people don't care that there is service listen let me tell you for every dimension there is a price i, I wish i don't know how to make you believe this thing if you are unwilling to pay the price please forget about the dimension there are levels of anointing that when it comes to your life the moment certain things are not done it will destroy you it's better for it to have not come believe what i'm telling you jonah 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 entered a boat and people they started losing things and when they were checking they said what is making this boat heavy jonah said i'm the one who if i were not anointed i would have slept quietly but because of what i carried you are suffering for something now there are levels to not pray for when you are not ready for certain sacrifices oh god open my eyes are you ready to pray for everything you see because you will see things that will disturb you you are about to rest and you see a plane crash you are about to rest and you see a car crashing somebody and if it happens that way god will call you and say if your eyes were closed you are free but hence you cried and said open my eyes it's not about prophesying you no know, there is a responsibility oh god make me rich let me be your distributor and god stands and says as you are leaving your house now carry fifty thousand. my people are in need of it yes sir ah, oh god you said you want to be my steward oh yeah carry it and somebody comes and while you are talking he says give five thousand to sam there are two little children give all of them one one thousand and you are acting like a fool and god says that's how my distribution system works the day you are not interested i close the heavens as simple as that i see a lot of greedy people admiring blessed people and think that there are people for over two months your offering is 10 naira or one year 10 years you drink is five for life how much is five for life and then you squeeze as an adult working class you come to church with 10 20 naira and drop it and say but what are these young people doing are you joking brothers and sisters let me submit to you if you ever try to sow seeds like me it may kill you in one month I'm telling you this sincerely. Eh? Lord, make me a millionaire. He says, are you ready to sponsor 70 children? He said, no, no, I don't want that. Oh God, you gave me only two. He says, that's it. Whoever wants it my way must be ready to do my bidding. Hallelujah. Time the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, time the glory. Revive us. Is God speaking to us tonight? Stop claiming things blindly when there is no sincerity. Oh God, give me a give me an international anointing. Okay. Do you have the grace to counsel, to preach three, five times a week? Can you be sleeping on the road? Can you be sleeping in the air? That becomes your new bedroom. Can you sacrifice that much? It's not all about putting water and clapping. It's a sacrifice. Let me tell you this. And I stand before the God of heaven. Thank God he's here. You are spiritual people. Less than 15% of my prayers is for myself. God is my witness. 
less than 15 percent to myself father bless your people change their story a text message comes sometimes you don't see me reply your text message it doesn't mean i don't pray over it do you have the sacrifice can people come to your house and you carry your last meal and give them everything and then they don't tell you thank you and god said it's none of your business leave the issue is between me and you please listen to me oh these are the engagings it's not just about honor it's not just about sitting i'm ready to be a man of god are you ready for the criticism everything about your life is an open book everybody criticizes everything can you sit down hearing people criticize you and still sleep sound and get up in the morning some of you who are so sensitive i think you stole my phone how can i be the thief and you are moving around and you want to do ministry you must be broken and you must be worked on by god is god speaking to us this teaching is very sincere most of us see blessed people and just admire them and i look at the greed that is in many people's lives greed you can sit down somebody is saying i've not eaten there is one thousand naira in your pocket you say go and meet apostle go and meet apostle he, 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 he likes giving just talk to him and he will give you and this is the person holding one thousand naira and you are saying oh god when will you visit and god even scholarship you will not see for where Are we together? This is how this thing works. So, send 200 naira recharge card to your mother. You rejected it. Whereas somebody transferred 1,000 to you. And God says, take 200. Say, how, how many? And it's not like there is an important discussion. And God says, I'm watching your heart. You are not engaging this thing. Let me show us why we are really not getting results. Let's be honest with ourselves. Am I engaging the word? Cain got angry because of Abel's results and God said no no this is not about Abel if you do what Abel did to the latter will you not get his result hear me it doesn't cost God to raise help for you there is something we are not doing that is keeping the heavens closed there is something a man of God is not doing that's why his ministry is not growing there is something a father a mother a brother a sister is not doing that's why we are perpetually in lack and suffering and penury every guy that comes to me lives in two weeks five guys have come sister calm down could there be that there's something you are no 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 there's nothing wrong with me yeah, i just happen to have bad luck with stupid guys five of them stupid that means something in you is attracting them because you draw your kind to yourself the body of christ likes passing blames we blame witches we blame pastors we blame government we blame our parents let me tell you your miracle starts the day you get a chair or go behind one tree and sit down i'm surprised seeing many gentlemen their lives are not moving they are not doing anything after koinonia you're just looking at any sister who can i now marry you this one that time is going and there's nothing happening you see what we're saying A gentleman who will go and sit down with a biro and your bible and a tape recorder lord it can't be this way the word of god is coming every day why is my life like this i am 31 i am 35 i am 40 i'm seated i can i have to beg for gary lord i love you something is wrong and all of a sudden you come there your friend is calling say leave me alone no, you better leave me alone say is this your did you renew your dstv say don't near my house you have been deceiving me for many years and you sit down and all of a sudden the word of the lord comes this sitting down is what we don't do we stand up moving around this hustling life pillar to post one thing is needful sit down first 
stand up as instructed don't move around just like that you, you see the labor of the fool the engaging of a fool weary at every one of them because he doesn't know the road to the city not every action is profitable it is the action that is done in obedience and through understanding apostle i'm anointed i'm surprised i organize a meeting and nobody comes there is something you need to know more about the anointing it's more than laying hands apostle people come to my church they receive miracles and go back that means there is something you need to know about leadership you have done well knowing about miracles but there is something you do not know about leadership please blast in tongues for one minute and say lord i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this dimension i'm tired of this face Lift your voice and pray. Shabakata katoka sepra kata kota shegata. Lekata prosata katoka shegata pakarakato sikata. Lord, I know you are ever faithful. Pray. I take responsibility tonight. There is something I am not engaging adequately. Zekate koto soto kata prakatash. Lekata proske sekate marakato sebriada. Hallelujah. Please sit down. The Lord has brought before us several keys, mysteries, secrets that are responsible for certain outcomes. Brothers and sisters, it's up to us. There are lazy people waiting for others to enjoy, to engage it, then they enjoy the benefit. You cannot sit down and be dependent forever. Our little children should be the ones waiting. But an adult, oh, you know that thing they say in Hausa, Ale Baka Musamu. So while you are engaging, I'm resting. After all, you'll be too kind to leave me like that. Nah. The Bible says, right from the days of John the Baptist, even until now, the kingdom suffered violence. And the violent would take it by force. Someone who would say, No way, Lord, I will force what is my portion from the realm of the spirit life does not deliver anything to careless less as fair if it happens it happens no everybody who receives anything worthwhile are those who stand in life and force their own force it down this passive and no one day things will happen we are not angry enough that's why we have not broken the back of certain things in our life We are learning. I've shared with you. There are some of us, the reason why we are not getting results in our lives is because we ignore God. I've shared these principles. You don't ignore God and prosper, sir. Okay, um, I'm a businessman. Me, I'm not into ministry. Ignore God and see. Ignore God and watch the devil rubbish your life. Many business people don't honor God. They honor business. They honor men. But they don't honor God. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. How many people start working and they, they don't have time for God? Time for the house of God? No. Time for the things of God? I'm a bit busy. Lord, you know that I'm, I'm engaged. And God says, hey, you are engaged. And then the devil comes to rubbish your life and your work. One sickness arises and just destroys you. Somebody in your office looks at you and says, let me see how you will rise to the next level. And that's, it is they that know their God that shall be strong and do exploits. 
to, the fierceness in today's world does not require guessing about God. You must know God. Hallelujah. I've said it humorously. Only God can tell the number of charms and shrines and herbal places that have my names on their altars. Only God knows the people who project me as I sleep to make sure I don't wake up. This man you see is here for a long time. Very long time. Is that true? Yes. Some of us have refused. We have been drumming mental development. And we have refused. So we are mediocre where we are. It's amazing how when the word of God comes, people exempt themselves. Say, this part is not for me. This is the part for me. No. All scripture was inspired. How many? All scripture. God can be talking about mental development. And he can say, me, for me, I'm a man of prayer and fasting. Leave that one for um, um, mental development. All those who want to become professors and lecturers. For me, this is a vineyard. And you are there and you find out that because your mindset is thinking wrong regardless of your results L listen being around the truth and not engaging it can destroy you because it will bring about familiarity you are familiar with every man of god every program everything yet it will not bless you those that were close to jesus ran away they were not getting anything Nicodemus came and met him once in the night and received something that changed his life. Mental development. Mental development. Upgrading your mind. Expanding your capacity to be relevant in today's world and grants you the opportunity to glorify Christ. How about people who do not understand authority? This is the mystery they have not engaged. And that's why the devil whips them left, right, and center. Left, right, and center. They have no honor, no regard for anybody on earth. Some of our parents are like that. Like that. Just say, hey, so so man has come to town. Which man? So why are people going to go and see him? What's the spell? You see, you see and, and they start debating it. And the person debating is poor and broke and sick and suffering. He does not know that it is for this cause many are weak many are sick and many do sleep he sits down there and a miracle is close to him sometimes in his neighborhood and he hears Reinhard Bonke preaching and laughs he said ah, is that the wise man you were talking about what is this one he says they said Baba is about to pray for the sick no, 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 mind those people and his kind of case is what is being called and they are being healed and Reinhard Bonke will go back and the proud man who does not understand authority sits down there. Look, the way we have cheated ourselves because of ignorance of the systems of God. Cheap victories that have been complicated through ignorance. Look at students here. You heard the testimony of one of our ladies last week. No school fees, no nothing. And then result comes out and you are graduated. Ha <laughs> ba. There are some of us where our lives are the way it is because there is no excellence to anything we do. We are born again, but everything is mediocre. Everything. Everything. Average mediocre. Local champions. I'm a tailor. Like who? Well, I'm, I'm here. I'm patching here and there. I, Lord, I need increase. And God says, increase your capacity. Be excellent. Be excellent. So that you can now start making clothes. When you make a millionaire's clothes, you get a millionaire's reward. When you make clothes for somebody who gives you 500 today, 200 tomorrow, 800 today to pay 3,000. And you are arguing as if, arguing and arguing and fight and forgive the person. But you still suffer. You get tired and say, Lord, I've started, I've left this level. I've challenged us who has been excellent. Hallelujah excellent 
Some of us, relationships, this is the mystery we are not engaging. We know it, but we are not engaging it. Hallelujah. Relationships. Honorable is here. Um, I, I don't mean to embarrass him, but this man of God that you see, forget that he's a politician. I told you politicians are my friends. I'm intentionally friends with politicians because whoever controls power controls what happens. I'm not one of these, these foolish people that throw away politicians away. They are my friends. They are my friends. They are my friends. Yes. They are my friends. Hallelujah. Jezebel wanted to destroy the people in the land of Elijah. The first thing she did was to marry the king. To make sure she was at the seat of governance. Then she now pushed Ahab and said, oh yeah, wait, I'm the one in charge. See that? A true apostolic grace must be able to minister the life and the power of God even at the level of governance. I went for Mubi Crusade. An honorable is here. Do you know, brothers and sisters, this man, as great as he is with his status, and all of this he came for the crusade with his wife stayed like two days together and returned back when i go to yola sometimes with his own car carries me in his own jeep and drives around praise the lord relationship if he calls me and says his wife is having headache you call me There, there were calls but let me show you how i will respond relationship that's what brought docas back to life when docas died she was a woman who well she said i can't preach but i can sew madam you are cold let me make sweater for you when she died the widow said no way these wicked men they are all preachers but they don't take care of us you better raise this woman back to life for our sake hallelujah Tomorrow, if he becomes a governor, I'm still his friend. Is that true? Yes. Access. That's why when he comes like this, we honor him. What is all this? Everybody is equal before God. It is true based on your understanding. System that we do not know that destroys us and rubbishes our lives because we do not know are we together yes relationships i told you the easiest way to rise in life is relationship everything money can pay for relationships can pay for it if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not wise there are things relationships should pay for You can't pay for the house, but a relationship can give it to you. I, I spent time um, the week before last to talk extensively on relationships. I'm not going to go back, but please listen to that message. I can spend my time talking to you about relationship. That's what happened. John the Baptist had the privilege. His mother, listen, John the Baptist did not study what happened around his birth. When Mary received the prophecy of the angel she knew it was a strange thing she had to search for another woman who had a strange experience like her to be able to relate with her and she found out she had the gist of elizabeth and how john came and when they met their babies left when john was born he was older than jesus six months of course at the wilderness there when he met jesus for a while he was walking with jesus but offense came in because some of jesus's disciples left and became his disciple and he left and then he now went trying to look for relevance he went and started lambasting herod because he did not know the protocol of the palace he thought that the palace is the same thing as the wilderness the way you speak in the wilderness is not how you speak in the palace there are principles, all preachers, that rubbish themselves in high places and they call it speaking for Christ. There is the wisdom and intelligence. When Paul was in the Jerusalem council with the Sanhedrin, he spoke as a Pharisee. 
He said, look, 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 look. I can speak as this and that, but look, now, there are Pharisees, Sadducees. Let me bring a point of divide. I'm speaking based on my authority. I'm a Pharisee. Spoke about the resurrection and that place caught fire. Relationships. Many of our parents today know too many people to be looking for house at their age. Is that true? They didn't raise anybody. They didn't lift anybody. All their friends are successful people. They watch television and tell you this guy was my friend. Do you know that uh, General Buhari was my classmate? Do you know this one was my classmate? Do you know that Kofi Annan, we drank tea together? Oh God, why have you not been there? What has that relationship done for you? This is why when we do things in church, like turn to one another and give them a nice hug and you are frowning. The, this investment you are making now of rejecting people will be waiting for you in the future. You will see the person you frowned at in power and glory. And now you will not have the same access again. It is cheaper now than later. You've heard me say we will all be great. But the greater part is that we will all know ourselves. That's the most important part. So that what I do not have a Jimmy can give me at a platter of gold. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. As a ministry by the grace of God, God has helped us to enjoy certain privileges with people, with institutions, because of relationships. What have you refused to engage? That is punishing you and is destroying you. What have you refused? What do you know and have been wishing will work for you, but you have not engaged it truly? Hallelujah. It's one of the things I respect a lot about my dad. My dad understands relationships in a strange way. He knows almost anybody everywhere. If he's a policeman, he will scroll down. There has to be one policeman he gave bag of rice some years before. If it is prisons, if it is customs, if he's a carpenter, even if it's a truck he does not have that stops. He knows a mechanic somewhere. He knows the one that fixes Peugeot. He knows the one that fixes these relationships. Now, it's costly. That's a very busy life. But it's only busy until the day you need those people. One call. And they tell someone else, yes, sir. But another, you keep knocking forever. And you say, God, help me. God, I helped you since. You misuse the opportunity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What have you been paying for that relationships would have paid if you engage them? How long will you continue hating people and talking about them as though you are going to live in this world alone? How long are you ready to continue holding grudges? When will you forbear and excel? There are ladies over my dead body, my mother, I will never talk to her. But the blessing in your destiny is in the mouth of that woman. Justified she did something wrong. But can you ignore everything so that you step into another dimension? Hallelujah. I am passionate about engaging the word. I am passionate. I studied the life of Job because I want to be very prosperous. And I studied his life. I saw things that Job did that if Job died poor, God would have been a wicked person. I found treasures. I said, ah, this is what Job did. Not the obvious things we see. There were things that Job did. What are you doing? Some of us, these are little children. They never look at you and smile. They look at you and they are afraid. You call them children. Remember, you are not going to die young. You have received the anointing for long life. The children you laugh at today, you are only 10 years older than them or 20 years or 30 years. They will soon grow and become adults too and occupy positions of influence. And you will see that a mistake you did 30 years ago will haunt you and your children and children's children. 
is God giving us wisdom? These are, these are the systems that we, these are these are these are success systems. These are success systems. I'm I'm challenging us. This engaging part is what came in my spirit today to talk to us about. Engage the word. Engage the word. Engage the mysteries you know and stay there. Stay there till it produces. Don't engage once and complain. Do you know there was a time in my life I did everything but there was no result? Everything to be done, I cross-checked and it was correct. Once you have done everything, leave God's part to him. So when people are complaining and say, Apostle, what am I missing? I say, you are not missing anything. Just stay there. Just like that? Yes, sir. Stay there. God is watching your growth. And he knows that if those blessings come, you don't have the spiritual capacity to take it yet. So he keeps you. And then overnight, you wake up and step into a dramatic dimension of the anointing. And they say, where did he come from? He's always been there waiting. I've been sowing seeds. Continue. It says not to be weary in well doing. For we will reap in due season. There is a due season if you fail not. If you fail, the due season will come and pass. And you will not see anything. I will never stop sowing seeds. I will sow like a madman. Until the day the harvest comes. I will never stop engaging my passion for God. I will never stop building capacity. I will respect every man of God and every authority that is producing the results that I'm not producing. Never will I open my mouth to talk about somebody who is producing results that I'm not producing. It's pride of the highest order. No matter how simple and how cheap they sound, they are engaging something that is producing my results. I have a meeting next year and God has granted me the privilege and I'll have the privilege to be meeting with I think maybe for the first time in my life one of the billionaires in the world in Nigerian I look forward to that meeting I'm preparing for it like I'm writing jam he said I, I, apostle for what this dishonor we carry is why we never rise if I sit down with a billionaire and he talks to me for five minutes, I will go down on my knees and say, thank you, sir. Because it will change my ignorant mind for God's sake and deliver me from the things that have pegged me and my lineage at certain levels. I look forward to that meeting. I've been praying and fasting about it. I say, Lord, this meeting cannot be once. We have to be friends. We have to be what? Yes. Because a friend sticks close to, than a brother. This brother, sister thing, friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know we think it doesn't matter what I just said. Look at our lives. Look at our families. Have you not seen the rules we have broken for ages? God is faithful. Our lack of understanding his system is what is punishing us. Apostle, why are you teaching all this? So you can serve God. Let my people release them from this pain so that they will go and serve me. I want, they are, for as long as they are working in the farms, for as long as they are suffering in Egypt, they can't serve me. Say, let my people go so that they will do what? It is my desire to see some of our brothers a few years from now. That when others get up in the morning and are running helter skelter, you are there with your family. You made a way. That's the worship song playing. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And visitors come to your house discussing survival and you are discussing kingdom we have allocated 10 million to this ministry there is a mission agency we heard that these people are passionate about souls and they say are you a pastor he said no i'm just a brother in church i have been trained that my entire life is about the kingdom say are you, you 
you better stand up and make ends meet. And Luther continued and said, no, not in this house. We have demarcated this house through understanding, exempted forever from certain things. Someone comes to your house and says, what's that noise I'm hearing? Say, we have a vigil today. Say, ah, which prophet is coming? Say, no, priesthood, our house, we have vigils. Say, are you not aware that uh, you have to rush? Say, no, 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 God is faithful. God is faithful. And you are praying. And they say, what are you praying for? Souls. Say, ah, what about, uh, what about ends to meet? Say, ah, God, God, as we settled that long ago. This is, in this house, it is kingdom. Do you think this is possible, what I'm saying? You better believe it. Otherwise, you will be another angry person. This is what I want my life to be all about. Let no one deceive you that your whole life should be spent looking for money. Then serving God small on the way. It's a cost. Did you hear what I said? It's a cost. You can live a happy life where you sit down and teach your children by yourself because you have time. Junior, come. Daddy is about to teach you how to tithe. Have your envelope. Have your own. You put your own one million dollars. The young boy puts his own hundred dollars there. He's learning how to tithe. Daddy, what do we do with this? Son, this is called the law of open heaven. Say after me. And he murmurs whatever he says, but he's learning. By the time that child is 10, he's a millionaire by himself without your influence. And one day he says, Daddy, I was sleeping and I had a voice. And the Lord told me to donate half of my wealth to a mission agency. He says, son, do it fast. Because his father has understanding. Do it fast. Daddy, I thought I was going to become a doctor. But I had a voice in the night saying I'll be a great man of God. Don't worry, you are covered. Not this morning ceremony. Says, so you are going to the vineyard now. Who is the sponsor? No, that's, that's the mindset they carry about preachers. The moment you say you are preaching, people just look at you and they, they have a valedictory service for you into a life of pain. No, sir. Hallelujah. One day you get up and carry your family. Where are you going to? We are going for a Hillsong conference in Australia. You mean it? Yes. Yes, sir. We are going there and we are sitting down. He said, you mean this is how your whole life? He said, this is how it is, so. I don't know about you i so thank god i'm a man because you can design the life the way ladies don't feel bad just just pray that's that's it i will never spend my life bowing to the statue of nebuchadnezzar no sir no sir hmm. how can i call on your name and end up in shame no way no way how can i bow down before you and then bow down before a man no way because you are my god Men may not believe it, they think we are jokers. But you are my God. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are my God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18, let me round up. It says, For I record. That the sufferings of this present time brothers and sisters i am not unaware of the pain you are going through i'm not a fool i know that there are constraints there are pains that you are going through but my bible greater than any constitution of any republic the bible says for i know i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory doxa that shall be revealed the weightiness of God in us in us the Bible says for the earnest expectation of your family of your lineage not just of creation listen some of you are listening to me 
and the devil is telling you don't mind that man it has never been done in your lineage go and study it and god says you are the one i'm raising you. i'm raising you to make a spectacle to principalities and powers that causes can be subdued that yokes can be broken listen god is looking for men that he's looking for a generation he said this is the generation that seeks thee let me tell you there is a generation that will seek god as a vocation not now there are individuals there are churches but there will come a generation an age range where what they do is to seek god church services every day every day not just on sunday as one convention is finishing another one is starting and you can attend it because you have conquered the forces that keep men busy bowing down to the status of nebuchadnezzar what to eat what to wear that's what drives people to work in the morning you are supposed to work but the purpose is not just make your ends meet it's a revelation of the glory of the father disabuse your thinking from this servitude mentality god wants to raise us but it will happen by engaging his systems lift your voice and begin to pray lord i exempt myself 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 through knowledge shall the just be delivered there is a generation that will serve god there is a generation that will seek the god of jacob not seeking money not seeking power we will conquer wealth we will conquer all the things that distract men so that the only time that will be left is in advancing the course of the kingdom and improving the living of men pray listen i look forward to times where our doctors will set up hospitals that are 10 times the size of shika and everybody who comes half the price was already covered by a kingdom financier yes sir for a hospital not a church not a church you meet someone and there is a surgery happening that person is about dying because they don't have money here comes a kingdom financier what did you say is happening i love god and i love his creation too much please treat the person listen let me tell you this please don't ever think i'm just making noise this is prophecy it will happen you 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 may throw yourself out but it will happen hallelujah a time in the history of the church where there are men who walk to reveal the glory of god they are so blessed they don't discuss money again hallelujah i heard about the net worth of one very funny person like that and the thing pained me because i read an article about a church that was building their cathedral and the amount was so meager they borrowed loan from a bank and the bank was harassing them harassing the pastor they wrote all kinds of things and insulted the man and they said the man plunged into depression and died i think it was last week or week before last when i had that thing it pained me i said in the vision god showed this guy death was not part of it all it was something that killed this man yet there is someone answering the kingdom of darkness and has more than hundred times what that church is praying for please don't tell me that is the will of god get up in the morning you are doing this job today you are doing this one tomorrow god calls you say sorry god i have to pay my child school fees no sir some of our parents may not have gotten it right we don't have to mock them but you have to stand and say lord for the sake of my children i will pay this price lift your voice and pray lord i pay the price if my father if my mother knew better they would do better but now that i know this oh god i will pay the price i will pay the price lift your voice i will pay the price no joking with my life i will pay the price 
I will pay the price. Lift your voice and pray. Engaging the systems of the kingdom. Not only believing them. Not only having access to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to lift your voice and cry that the spirit of disobedience, the spirit of spiritual laziness that does not allow you engage the word, you just keep wishing, no, no, sir, no, ma. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, the grace to put the word to work. Lord, I confess I've not been a faithful title. Pray. I, I stop playing games with my destiny tonight. Lord, I confess my prayer life has gone down. My word life has gone down. Lord, I confess I'm not serious with my destiny. As a gentleman, God has called me into ministry, but I'm not giving it the attention it requires. They're admiring people, fighting people, gossiping, and trying to make a name for myself. I settle down with destiny. 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 Hallelujah. Listen, let me give you a little assignment. When you go back home tonight, I want you to write specific goals, things you are doing. This issue of doing everything, <laughs> I'm on a mission to rising financially. I'm on a mission to knowing God. I'm on a mission to accessing the healing anointing. Don't just study randomly and move. No, write things. The Lord is calling me into ministry. And he told me the ministry is starting February next year. But from now till February, I am engaging this. I need to know the mystery behind speed. I need to know what keeps members. You write it and sit down. I've, I've not been faithful in tithing. That means I've not had a revelation about it. The issue is not just to carry money and start running. The issue is to sit down and say, this month, I'm going to take a course. I'm going to take a study on it. Who has written books in this area? And you sit down. Who has done a very comprehensive, balanced, not hungry, manipulative teaching on it? And you study. That's how you grow. You carry your issue of concern, put it before you. Close your eyes to every other thing until that mountain crumbles. Don't leave it. That's how winners work. But all this one of try today, if it's too hard, you turn this direction, you will still meet it there. Stay there and win. Did you hear what I said? Stay there and win. Let me tell you in my little life, I can tell you there is no mountain that is not surmountable. It's a lie. Don't listen to anybody that talks to you like that is not your friend. Don't go near them again. I want you to write a list of the mountains before you. Pray, dance, but sit down. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. You read a book. You check something. There's got to be a way. Then you enjoy the beauty of triumph. Brothers and sisters, triumph is sweet when you conquer your challenges. You live as if Satan does not exist. There is such a realm. It is my desire with all my heart, among other things that God will bring, not just this ministry. He has helped in a measure, not just me, but every one of us. Not just to a level of spiritual awakening. I, I'm trusting God for an avalanche of, do you know how you conquer poverty? Like, you put it under your feet. This is what God would do in this ministry and with people and you watch people serve God all this obsession for money that runs people to hell ladies marrying for money brothers doing this people leaving God for money all kinds of nonsense and we can focus on God then there will be prayer altars afresh that seek God for him not for what he can bring there will be men and women who can study. There are some of you, there are books locked up in your spirit for nations. But suffering will not let those books come out. Because all you are thinking now is, oh God, let me just look for something to eat. We depress ourselves and have high blood pressure to death. Whereas there is a way.
a noble way where you spend your life at the end of your life like david you say like like um paul you say i have fought the fight good fight i have finished my course you have poured yourself like a drink offering nothing left again are we together the last prayer point and we're done for this night i like you to cry and say god hold my hands and insist that I don't stop until I get to the, des the place of destiny. Hold my hands. I ask you to. He held the hands of Peter. Some of you in your, in your, in your, in your quest to obey God. You have seen things no dive in your life. Cry and say, Lord, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Hold my hands, oh God. Stop me from sinking and lift me up. Use my life as a spectacle to show what you can do with the anointing, to show what you can do with influence, to show what you can do with men and women who are passionate about agenda. I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. I will lift my hands to you in worship and I will worship with all my I'm leading a generation to seek him Lord we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with all our hearts we will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship listen rounding up before i make the altar call listen to me i want to encourage hold on guys i want to encourage every brother here you're a brother when you go back home this night please please do this Go and get a notebook. Sit down. Use this weekend. Please. Thank God there, there's, there's holiday. Today, tomorrow, Sunday. Even if it's one hour. Please. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Find somewhere alone. Everybody say alone. Not with your neighbor. Not group. Find somewhere alone. Whether it's one forest somewhere or outside near one tree one dam somewhere and just sit down with a notebook and a paper don't carry any book just go and stay there and say holy spirit i'm rededicating my destiny not my life to you you are the only one who can help me this ministry you are giving me this business this life this family is too much for me i am ready to receive your wisdom and you it will shock you what God will do for you in that retreat. Don't do it sitting in your room or your parlor. No, no, no. Find a place. Go somewhere. If you see someone there, find another corner somewhere. One grass somewhere. One uncompleted building of a school somewhere. Just hang around somewhere, even if it's for one hour. Take a time of inventory. The way I'm living my life, am I going to make it? Are we together? This is called self-supervision sit down the way i'm running my family are we going to rise this way the way i'm living my life am i going to be great this way the the time i am giving god will this time really birth his glory in me and then come up by the spirit with resolutions the lord will show you areas the lord will show you things ladies you can do it too I'm not saying it's, it's just for guys and then ladies lazy around. This is everybody's destiny. Carry a notebook. Flog it out somewhere. Let me tell you the second thing I want you to do. Please hear me and don't be offended with what I'm telling you. You have to search for the names and numbers of certain people and delete them out of your phone. I repeat. You have to search for the names, comma, and the numbers of certain people and do what delete them out of your phone i promise you being a friend of everybody will not give you your destiny are we together
there are people who are not bad they are not demonic but they are too distracting to accommodate them they are, they are, their distraction to your destiny is not worth it let them be the day you rise, you can always recall them but for now you are on a project some of you may need to trust God to get a place, whether off you or get a small room with somebody. You, you just need to pay whatever price it will take to allow you to build this great destiny. Are we together? Yes. Some of you may need to minimize certain useless visitations. Visitations that don't make sense. From pillar to post, flying around. No. Some of you may need to minimize movies. I'm not saying movies are wrong. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But let me tell you, you are not going to spend your whole life watching movies and you'll make it in life. No, sir. Is that true? Some of us may need to minimize sleep. 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 Snore your way, time is going. But this is, Bible says, a little sleep, a little slumber. A little folding of the and poverty comes upon you like an unbanded. Some of us may need to minimize food. Please, I'm not saying starve yourself, don't get me wrong. But I'm telling you, gluttony is killing some of us. Killing some of us. Some of us need to reduce your three phones to one. The two are not doing anything. They are distracting you. Distracting you. Some of you need to reduce the number of social media platforms. Except you are there maybe on business or something. You are on every social media platform. Your phone is beeping per second per second some of us may need to off our phones that's what you need for that one two hours off it there is nothing that is too urgent off it and spend time with god these are the things that distract people who have potentials of greatness the holy spirit wants to make greatness out of people but we keep getting distracted if you can pay this price i press you you may not like me now for what i'm telling you but tomorrow you will see me and say, thank you, sir. The person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth. No matter how uncomfortable. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. There is a level of anointing you must enter. There is a level of influence you must enter. I want God to do business with you. That he, you will rise to become a voice for his majesty. This is what he's looking for. Father, we give you the glory tonight. You have challenged us tonight. This is more than a sermon. This is the heart of God pounding on your destiny. The Lord is challenging us very truthfully and seriously. Tonight, there are ladies and gentlemen, men and women standing here. Whilst you heard me teach, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you that you need to correct your life and run to Jesus. Now, please, everyone keep standing. No movement. There are people in this place tonight that are saying, Lord, I need to run to you. Perhaps you're coming here for the first time and you have always laughed at men of God every time they made altar calls. The Lord is speaking to you that tonight is your own turn. Or at one point you have given your heart to the Lord, but things just went haywire, your life scattered and you joined it and just, you know, destroyed the path of glory that you were following followed friends followed every kind of thing made a mess of your life and you're saying man of god can he receive me back absolutely and tonight wherever you are our time is gone i want you to take a bold and a serious step a bold and it must be serious you must come here meaning it from your heart wherever you are inside outside please i'd like you to make that bold step right now and come up even as we appreciate them quickly quickly lord i'm tired of playing games with my life you're welcome quickly let's clear the way for them as they are coming please encourage them encourage them apostle i've always been a nice guy it's just that i can't remember making this altar call join them join them i'm not sure my father is a pastor i've grown in a pastor's house join them join them please join them whether i overflow one two three wherever you are join them god bless you 
Apostle, I don't want people to see me. Forget about that. Please join them and come. Join them quickly. Keep coming. Above him there's no other. Jesus is way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Please allow them come. If they are coming, keep coming. Above him there's no other. If you are still joining them, please rush and come. Those of you who are here, I truly congratulate you with all my heart. I know that you are standing here. Some of you are handing your life over to Jesus for the first time. Some of you are rededicating your life. It doesn't matter. Let me tell you, Jesus is not a religion. Jesus is not an opinion. He is life. He will truly give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Now, lift your right hand and say after me very clearly. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I come before you tonight just as i am i ask you to forgive me to cleanse me to give me a new beginning i declare that you are lord of my life you are my savior you are my king i receive eternal life tonight into my spirit and i declare that from tonight I'm a child of God. I am saved. I am delivered. In the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Lord Jesus, who but you is able to save men? Who but you is able to show mercy and grace? Lord, I decree and declare that these ones who have come unashamedly standing before you and standing before your people, let this be a new beginning for them. In the name of Jesus. I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that the power of Satan, sin, hell, the grave is broken over your life. I decree and declare that the grace to live a victorious life, the hunger for God and for the things of God is planted in your heart tonight. From today, you will go higher and higher and higher in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I declare that the Lord himself will bless and honor and lift you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now... Um, please, all of you, I want you to follow. There is a gentleman that will be waving his hands. Um, this lady, my dear, look at me, you. I want you to meet Pastor Alpha, hmm? this girl. While they are going, meet Pastor Alpha. Please, I want you to personally counsel this lady. Hmm? I saw something that, please, you counsel her and God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please, all of you, God bless you. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.